Now you have seven. Oh. Now you have seven. Perfect. Okay. So um, let me just get me stuck in here. And with this being different, um, do I need to read all of that into um, the record, or do I just move forward with bringing the meeting to order? I think like you can move meeting. forward. With so um, this is Wednesday, October 24th, I mean, October 21st, 2020. And this is the Flint City Council meeting that um, the replacement for the one that was canceled on the 12th. And so roll call, please. Mr. Mays? Present. Mr. Davis? Present. Mr. Guerra? Ms. Fields? Ms. Fields? Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, present, attending remotely from Flint, Michigan. I think we're going to do that part next. Ms. Fields? Yeah, we are. Thank you, Janelle. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Present. Mr. Uh, Winfrey? Present. Ms. Galloway? Present. Mr. Griggs? Present. Ms. Worthing? Okay, that's seven present. Thank you. And so now each member, according to, it says, pursuant to the newly revised Open Meetings Act, each council member shall state that they are attending the meeting remotely and shall state where he or she is physically located, county or city and state. If we could start with Councilman Mays. Councilman Mays, to say that you, re you are attending remotely and where you are at this time. Yeah, uh, this is Councilman Mays on retain. I'm attending electronically and remotely from Stockton, California, right outside Sacramento, and that is in San Joaquin County. Okay. Mr. Davis? This is Mr. Davis. I'm attending electronically from the great state of Michigan, located in Genesee County in Flint, Michigan. Okay. I think Mr. Guerra said he might not be able to make it. Mr. Guerra, are you here? He's not in tonight. Okay. Ms. Fields? Uh, Kate Fields attending remotely from Flint, Michigan. Ms. Winfrey Carter? <laughs> Jerry Winfrey Carter attending remotely from Genesee County, Flint, Michigan. Mr. Winfrey? Herbert Winfrey attending remotely from Flint, Michigan in Genesee County. Ms. Galloway? Monica Galloway attending remotely in Flint, Michigan, Genesee County. Mr. Griggs? Alan Griggs attending remotely from Flint, Michigan in Genesee County. And did Ms. Worthing make it in? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Uh, did you hear what, what you have to say or what you're supposed um, to say? Yeah. Yeah. Eva Worthing attending from Flint, Michigan, Genesee County. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. And all council members, um, contact information is provided um, in the agenda for the council. That brings us to our Pledge of Allegiance. Um, Mr. Winfrey, can you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America 
and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, is there any moments of silence that any of the council would like to recognize? Madam President. Yes, Councilman Winfrey. Uh, this is, uh, uh, well, it's it's really not a moment of silence. I guess you could call it a moment of silence, but I think that we as a council should uh, recognize and uh, send our um, feelings to the governor of the state of Michigan for what she has gone through with the uh, with the threats on her life, her and members of her family. Thank you, Mr. Winfrey. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? Hearing none, um, we 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 can put something together, I would think, for that. So um, we'll just have a moment. So the next part, it says procedures on conducting electronic public meetings. All boards and commissions must adhere to all laws established under the Michigan Compiled Laws and in accordance with the revisions to the Open Meetings Act adopted in Senate Bill 1108 as passed on October 13, 2020 and signed into law on October 16, 2020. That brings us to the reading of disorderly person city code subsection. Any person that persists in disrupting this meeting will be in violation of Flint City Code Section 31-10, disorderly conduct, assault and battery, and disorderly persons, and will be subject to arrest for a misdemeanor. Any person who prevents the peaceful and orderly conduct of any meeting will be given one warning. If they persist in disrupting the meeting, that individual will be subject to arrest violators shall be removed from the meeting. That brings us to, is there any request for changes and or additions to the agenda? Madam President, Madam you do have an add on ordinance. Yes. Uh, Janelle, can you, um, can you read into the record what the add on ordinance is, please? The add on ordinance is to uh, extend the 90 day, 60 day emergency for the marijuana ordinance. Thank you. And that'll be under ordinances, right? Yes, ma'am. Ma Mr. Griggs? Yeah, I'd like to um, add a special order about uh, a draft ordinance for alcohol sales. I'd like to, and I'd like for the special orders to come right after appointments. So, okay, Mr. Griggs, so you want to add another special order at the end of the other special orders to draft an ordinance for, is that what you mean? No, just to discuss the draft ordinance <laughs> for store hours and, and move all the special orders. After the so that's one. That's one. And then the second yeah. thing you want to do is you want all of the special orders to be moved. Where is that? After appointments. Right after appointments. After appointments, but before resolution. Yes. Are there any other um, changes and or additions? 
to the agenda? Yeah. Now. So, Councilman Mays and Minister Day. Okay. Vice President Day. Thank you, Councilman Mays. Uh, Madam Chair, I don't know if it's an amendment to uh, Mr. Grief, but I'd like to have discussion on liquor stores and in, in, in or possible violations to, to tie to ordinances and stuff because I don't know how to word it exactly, but I know I want to have a special order on, on a discussion according to liquor stores and gas stations of closing times. Thank you. So, so okay, so I do have that. But can I, can I just ask my colleague, um, we have a council meeting scheduled on Monday. We, we've found ourselves in a situation where we're having this meeting today, but we have a meeting scheduled for Monday. And, 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 I mean, I'm asking my colleagues, because there should be no special orders on that Monday meeting. I'm asking you all to consider putting this on that meeting since it's only five days away, and, and that way it would have all the attention and we wouldn't be adding another special point order. Point of order. What's your point of order, Councilman Mays? Madam President, once you get the proposed agenda changes, we vote on them in motions. Wouldn't it be proper for you to have your discussion on that during the vote on these issues rather than, you know, taken away from what we're into by agenda? I don't believe so, Councilman Mays. This is a request for changes and or additions to the agenda, and I'm making a request to my colleagues. And so point of I, order. I hear what, you're saying. what is your point of order, Councilman Mays? We're not at the discussion on these motions yet, ma'am. You don't have to be. Do you? Are you saying that there's something in the rules that's saying what I'm what I'm saying during this um, time of talking about requests for changes in our additions is in violation? Because that's what a point yeah, of order is. Yeah, I think is. you're having discussion and you're prolonging the moment. We'll get to that. Thank you, Councilman Mays. And so I'm saying Madam that to my families. Are there any other ones? So, Councilman yeah. Mays, I mean, sorry, wait, wait, wait one second, Mr. Griggs. So, Councilman Davis, okay. are you including your discussion with Griggs, or do you want your own? Councilman Davis, are you there? Oh, I was on mute. Yes, it, it could be included. It could be included. I'm not trying to make it a timely process today. No problem. Okay. Thank you so much. Mr. Griggs, you right. um, have something else? Yeah. Uh, well, to answer Councilman Davis's uh, question or interest in a violation, what, what a violation would be, that's included in the draft ordinance in front of us tonight. Is there and any I, other I would, re I, I would recommend what? Are there any other changes to the ag uh, agenda tonight? Yeah, no. I have a couple. Councilman May. Yeah. Um, one, I want to see if we can have a uh, special order. I don't care where it's located at, but I want to have a discussion on our leadership vote for next month. I know last August we did it, and I want to do it again. So I want to have a special order on our leadership vote um, as it relates to this council that's mandatory in the month of November. I want to have that discussion um, today, if possible. It could be under additional council discussion. Is that somewhere on the agenda or new business? Um, additional discussion items, Councilman. Okay, I want that specifically in there. And um, mm -hmm. also, I want to have an additional discussion item. I won't do it as a special order, but I'm requesting an agenda change to add an additional council discussion as it relates to what, in my opinion, the Supreme Court ruling had to do with Governor Whitmer's powers parallel to our emergency ordinance. So I guess the quickest way to say this agenda change, we're still operating locally in an emergency, and I want to talk about what that means for the legislative branch of local government and the executive branch. I want that under okay. any council discussion. Okay. 
Anything else, Councilman Mays? Not at this time. We do. Do okay. we have new business on there? Or just additional council discussion. Just additional council discussion. Yeah, I want that to. Um, after that, I want new business. In case there's, I mean, we could do motions and additional council discussion, but I don't know if the council rules adds new business or not. If it do or don't, I won't get into it. But forget with the new business. I'll deal with that on any additional council discussion. Okay. So if there's no more, we'll vote um, on the um, changes. So the first one is there is an additional, um, an extended emergency ordinance for the marijuana 60 days. Um, is there any discussion on adding that to the agenda? Any discussion? Madam President. Councilman Mays. That would come um, as an add-on during resolutions, correct? Actually. Or it would come on as an add-on during ordinances? Yes. Mm -hmm. During ordinances? Correct. Okay. All right. Okay. If there's no further discussion, roll call on that agenda change. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Ms. Fields? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Vote is eight yes, zero no. That vote is eight yes, zero no, so it passes. That brings us to the next request, which was a request by um, Councilman Griggs to add a special order discussion around liquor stores, an ordinance on liquor stores. Is that correct, Mr. Griggs? Yes. Okay. And so is there any discussion on that? Yeah, Madam President. Yeah, it seemed like there's no conflict in having the discussion, which includes both what Mr. Griggs and Mr. Um, Davis is saying. Um, that discussion Mr. Griggs talks about, about the draft ordinance, seemed to parallel with the same type of discussion that could be had that Mr. Davis is talking about. I don't know if he objects or not, but I think that's the same discussion, and um, we'll see what happens um, as we go along. I'm going to vote for both of them, both of them combined, because I think they overlap, and um, I'm ready to have that discussion. So I'll be voting for the special order. I'm hoping that they are combined. Thank you. Um, is there any further discussion on that? Madam Chair. Yes, Ms. Winter Carter. Um, I guess I guess my problem um would be do we want to add another special order? We already have an executive session. I just, I would just say, can we wait until Monday to do that um, that um, session that um, Griggs wants to do? I mean, that would be, I think that would be feasible. I think we would have more time, you know, to discuss things. Let's not just, you know, let's not overcrowd this agenda. Let's wait until Monday to have that discussion. <coughs> so I would, um, I think I'm going to vote no to have to Madam add Chair. this. Ms. Field, she's still Madam talking. Ms. Field, she's still talking. One second, please. Ms. Winfrey Carter, are you, I know, I, I didn't hear the last thing that you said. I said I'm going to vote no to add on a special order. 
Thank you. Ms. Fields? Yes. Um, I'm going to uh, vote yes on this because it, this is clearly a really pro a problem in our community. Uh, we've had homicides. Um, you know, people are up in arms all across the city about this issue, and I don't see any reason why. I, I think this is a, a primary interest to the populace and the residents, and I think we should start discussing this proposed ordinance tonight. Is there any other discussion? Madam, Madam President. Mr. Griggs and then Mr. Davis. Okay, uh, I'm definitely going to vote uh, yes on this because even the news media has uh, been picking up on the uh, a store hours ordinance, and there's no need to add another special order to this because included in this draft ordinance are the fines in case of violations. So anyhow, I'm going to be voting yes. Thank you. Mr. Davis. Thank you for indulging, Madam Chair. Uh, for clarity for Councilwoman Carter, if she want to drop all add-on uh, orders or just this one specifically until next week? Thank you. Ms. Winfrey Carter, did you want to um, answer that? No, I just said the special order as far as this ordinance. Thank you. Um, is there anyone Thank else that has anything to say? Okay. I, I, I agree. Um, there, we have a very long agenda. We also have um, two, five, seven, twelve, fifteen, fifteen resolutions. And, and based on the way that my colleague has made his motion is to put these special orders before the resolutions. And so there were already four, um, one, three special orders. And so I, I think that it is something that, that we should have a conversation about. But all I'm asking is that my colleagues um, stay as long as it takes to make sure that we get everything done. I would have liked to see the special orders done after the resolutions, if this is the way that the council has it, but um, I wasn't making the motion. And so with that being said, no more discussion. This is roll call. Yeah, Madam President, Madam President. Councilman Mays. I don't know if it's in, not any more discussion. You asked, was it anyone speaking? You hadn't no, spoke. Now I have time on the second round. Is somebody talking? You called me. I, I had the floor. Somebody yeah. saying ahead, something. Was somebody saying something? Who was that? Okay, I thought I had the floor. And um, now let me get my thought back together. Um, where was I at? Somebody was saying something, and it threw me out. That was out of order. Um, man, can somebody help me? What was I saying? We were talking about a, a, adding a special order, Councilman Mays. Oh, no, I know what I was saying, that the... Second round, even if you take a first round, you should always ask, is there anybody for the second round? In this case, I have a second round. My point is this, through you to Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis, does um, Mr. Griggs' um, discussion request satisfies yours as well? Do you know? It depends uh, the degree. Cause I know we got different issues according to different wards and styles. So my problems wouldn't be healed, but I would be all right put, combining them. I wouldn't have no issue combining them. Okay, so if they call for the next one, we might can say that they are combined and continue to move forward because we can also carry it over to Monday. But I'm going to be voting to start the conversation. Mr. Griggs is right to spend in the media. I'm hearing one side. So I'll be voting yes to have the discussion. We are the council. We dictate if we vote five or more what's out there in the public and what we have as priorities. 
So I'll be voting yes. I hope y'all combine them because it sounds like you can do your discussion and what he's saying. This draft ordinance, I'm going to be eager to hear who helping draft it and what is it talking about. And I'm going to see if you and Mr. Griggs have a meeting of the minds. So it'll be an arresting discussion. It might have to postpone to Monday if it get too long, but I'm willing to vote yes. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Griggs, you Oh, one last thing, thing, if I may, Madam President. Okay, one last thing, if I may. Once I'm done, I started talking, sir. Um, Mr. Griggs, you, you said something about a draft ordinance. Is that you? I don't, I don't have a copy of a draft ordinance. Are you it just going to be talking it, about it? It was, it was probably, uh, Madam Chair, it was probably emailed to everybody about uh, two hours ago, maybe, two or three hours ago. It's in your email from uh, Davina. So so you're adding on an ordinance in addition? Cause I, no, I I'm adding on, no, no, I'm just adding on a discussion of okay. a draft ordinance. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, sir. Councilman well, Mays, you have one more. Well, your time, your your second round was already up, and so um, technically we can just we can have that discussion when we have the um, the when we actually go into that segment of it. So, is there anyone else that hasn't spoken twice? Okay, then roll call on um, this special order, Mr. Davis. Yes. Ms. Fields? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? No. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Vote is seven yes, one no. The vote is seven yes, one no. Um, the next change was to have special orders to follow appointments. Is there any discussion on that? Yeah, Madam President. Councilman May. Yeah, um, I think I'm leaning toward voting no on that. <laughs> what I'm hating that I neglected to do was request that the public comment come before the executive session. The executive session, as I've looked at that um, agenda, I looked at the October 12th agenda as amended. I didn't, um, I don't think it changed. It seemed like I had information to tell me. And so, you know, to mute and unmute, I had to pull the agenda up on my phone to stay unmuted, and I'll do that probably in resolutions. But I'm really hating that we didn't allow public comment before the executive session, and now we're talking about moving these special orders. In some cases, I'd like to add the special orders where public could comment on some of these hot topics. But my position is this. Um, we didn't do that. That means I think the executive session might come before public speaking. I hope people will wait. Maybe we're going to be in there long. But I'll be voting no. I think the special orders is a hot topic. This council can adjourn this meeting. They can recess this meeting and come back tomorrow if they want to. Hell, we about we on phone. I'm given my destination in Stockton, California. This is the easiest meetings that we can have. No committee meetings. That's why I have no problem with the previous motion to discuss an ordinance. Until this council convenes committee meetings, we should meet long. Business is piling up. But I'm not going to be moving the hot topics around. The closing discussion of these stores is hot topics. I want the public to hear them, not later on the night, but first thing has been in the news. The 1702 um, Kenwood address 
residential's been calling in and they'll probably call in today. It's a hot topic. So I won't be bold to put them off any longer. I'm going to try to keep them right where they're at. The executive session, the closed session is where it's at. And so I don't care how long this agenda is. I've looked at the resolutions and I'm ready to deal with them. Two or three of them need to be separated. So, you know, we're council people. I'll be voting to leave the, that part of the agenda where it's at so these people can hear the discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Madam President. Councilman Wood? Yeah, I'll be voting yes to, to move the, these special orders after the appointments because there's no need to appointees, and there's quite a few of them. I haven't really counted what four or five appointees. There's no need them hanging around for two hours in case somebody wants to talk to them. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Madam President. Councilman Mays. Yeah, there's no other discussion. Now, that's interesting that Mr. Griggs, no appointees is there. Through you, how many appointees are here? Through you to whoever know it, to the appointees, how many is here? Maybe Mr. Griggs should have moved them to the front. If his logic is that they don't want to follow the agenda and hang on, and we move and stuff around for them, through you, Madam President, to whoever knows, can the appointees identify themselves as to how many of them is here? I can't tell from the phone numbers. It doesn't look like any of them are here, but I don't know that for sure. Okay, it's Lewis Hawkins on the phone. It's Lois Fletcher on the phone. I saw those grand blank addresses, and I want to talk about it. So are they here? I'm listening to Mr. Griggs and his logic. I don't see them. I guess Mr. Okay, Evans so we don't, don't know if here. they're here. He don't know if they're here. Through you, uh, Madam President, to Lois Fletcher, can I talk to him if I make my decision? Through you, Madam President, to Lewis Hawkins, may I talk to him? So, Councilman Mays, um, as the chair, according to the um, council rules, the chair can say whether you can speak, and you will be able to get to speak to them when that time comes. But right now, we are on a discussion as to whether Madam. we're going to move. Councilman Mays, that is the that is the motion, and so we need to stick. Madam there. President. Madam President, I'm very well versed on the council rules. When you got the floor, and it's on a motion, you can ask anybody for information and the right to speak. Now, the chair is being discriminatory if I say through you to Lois Fletcher, through you to Mr. Edwards, and for once in your life, you're going to determine you got the authority to give me the opportunity to speak. Now, I'm not going to start this meeting appealing your ruling, but every council person sitting under the sound of my voice know that if you deny me the right to go through you to somebody who Mr. Grigg said was relevant because they were hanging around, I want to know how long they had to hang around. You're dead wrong. And I ain't got nothing else to say. And you need to quit picking on me and discriminating against me because you're making up rules out of your head. You don't have that discretion to treat me differently on my request to speak to any department head or appointee. And as I contemplate a motion, whether they can hang around. Tell Mr. Griggs it ain't relevant. Council Mays, our council rule says council members may request to ask questions of administrative staff, et cetera, during debate on any agenda item. Guest speaker time allowed shall be determined by the presiding chair and is not considered to be a part of the limited debate time allotted to council. And so I'm not trying to be discriminatory, Councilman Mays. Um, but you ask and I know that rule, but what do et cetera mean? Administrative people, et cetera. Appointees is a part of et cetera. This is a debate on whether I will vote yes or no because they can't hang around. Mr. Griggs interjected they couldn't hang around. You didn't check him, but you're checking me. And let's not argue. Move on. It's obvious what you just did and said. I know the rule. I can ask for people. You absolutely can, Councilman Mays. 
So we are in a discussion on whether we're going to move the special orders to after appointments. And so if there's no further discussions, roll call, please. Ms. Steele. Like small ice cap and two blocks of cream. Yeah. Somebody, somebody needs to mute themselves. Please do it. Ms. Steele. Yes. I, okay. Um, yes. Where? Oh. Ms. Winfrey Carter? No. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? No. Mr. Davis? Yes. That's six yes, two no. So that's six yes and two no. And Councilman Davis, you said that your um, request was just going to be included with Mr. Griggs. Is, is that correct? So we don't need to do a roll call on that. At, at this time, so yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, 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 you, yes, it is, yes, it yes. is included or you want to roll it's call? It's included. Okay. Included. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. So that brings us to um, Councilman Mays' request to have a leadership discussion under council um, discussion items. Councilman Mays, I don't think that requires a vote, but is that what you were looking for? Yeah, I requested an agenda change to specifically add a discussion about the council leadership as we get ready to vote. I've watched this. I made this speech last year. Some council people objected to the open discussion. But, you know, when we come in in November, they just, I near chair the meeting, we start making roll calls. I've been around council for 30 years. You have council people talking to each other behind the scenes, in some cases illegally in violation of the Open Meetings Act. You have mayors and all kind of people calling and involved. So I want this council to have the same nerve it had last year. Let's talk about it, because we know it's coming up. If you don't know it, now you know I'm telling it. So this is a vote on whether or not council want to have an open discussion in October about what we know will happen in November. I've got that nerve. I'll be voting yes on this agenda change. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? No. Ms. Worthing? No. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Ms. Fields? No. Five yes, three no. The vote is five yes, three no, so that um, discussion item will be on the agenda. Next is the um, Supreme Court ruling um, with the governor's executive orders and how that um, correlates to our local government. Councilman, is there any discussion? Councilman Mays? Yeah, Madam President, for months I've said that our local state of emergency ordinance dictates that the mayor, when he's making decisions about partially opening City Hall, whether we test employees, whether we have curfews, um, I'll be and glad to talk about other things, but I mean, for months, it's been going on and on. The mayor came up last meeting and seemed like he came up with an understanding as we don't know what's going on in the city. I think I do know what's going on in the city, um, and he just wanted to update us. I wanted to talk about the mechanics of how the state of emergency ordinance works. 
you got to convene with us expediently and we do not give up our legislative power to make rules, laws, ordinances, amend, change, or modify any that he puts into place. He don't have both legislative and executive power. So I'll be voting yes on this agenda change because I'm going to be praying that my colleagues understand their role as legislators and as lawmakers and as life savers, you got to save people's lives. We had an uptick in City Hall, and it's got under the radar of Marjorie Raymond of Flint Journal and everybody. And my position is this. We must have this understanding and discussion, I pray to God. So I'll be voting yes to have this emergency ordinance discussion and an understanding of the mechanics of, in my view, how it clearly reads. Um, seemed like a 10th or 11th grader could understand this wording. So I want to discuss it. I'll be voting yes on the discussion, particularly in light of what the Supreme Court did. It kind of scares me and makes me think I think like a, a Republican Supreme Court justice. But it's just the way our law is simpler to read than the state law. But we've got executive branch and legislative branch, and we're in an emergency. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Uh, yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Ms. Fields? No. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Vote is seven yes, one no. The vote is seven yes, one no. That passes. So that is all of the, oh, um, and the motion for new business to be added to the no. council agenda. point of order, Madam President. I, I would do that request. Ooh, I'm sorry. Great. Okay. So that brings us to um, our executive session. The Department of Law requests, well, Attorney Wheeler, you can go ahead. Attorney Wheeler, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Okay. The uh, State Attorney's Office is here to go into your closed session for the purposes of discussing pending litigation and also a written legal opinion. Um, and, for, and pursuant to the Open Meetings Act, you request to do that for. For purposes of pending litigation, um, there will be a detriment if it was disclosed publicly and also pursuant to the state law under. Um, subsection. Excuse me, one second. Under MCL 15.263 and the uh, and the exemption stated there, and this would be in the matter of, of information. What's the point of information, Councilor May? What is can she read into the record the subsection she's referring to? And can those that are not speaking mute their phones so that we can just have some integrity in the hearing? Because um, Attorney Wheeler is going out. I just want to make sure that we can hear her. Can you hear me okay? I can. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, no problem. That would be um, under MCL 15.268E to consult with an attorney regarding trial or settlement strategy. 
and also under Section H to consider material exempt from discussion or disclosure by state or federal law, and that would be in the matters of the Flint Water Cases, case number 55, uh, colon 16 CB 10444 GEL MKM, and also for a legal opinion pursuant regarding the Open Meetings Act and Executive Order 2020 75. Thank you. Attorney Wheeler, were you done? Because he um, did a point of information. Did you have anything else you wanted to add? Um, no, I, no, I'm sorry. No, I did not. Okay. And so um, is there a motion from the council? Madam President. Madam Chair. Councilman Mays and then Ms. Fields. Yeah. I would move that we go into executive session on the cases and the legal opinion matters that's been stated on the record by Attorney Wheeler and, for, and the legal purposes that she read into the record regarding pending litigation and or material that's exempt from public discussion such as the legal opinions and I would so move. So there's a motion on the floor to go into executive session. Is there support for that motion? Madam President. Councilman Winfrey. I support the motion. It's been moved and properly supported. Is there any discussion on the motion? Yeah, Madam President. Councilman Mays. Through you to Ms. Wheeler. Ms. Wheeler, do we have guests waiting in the wings? Yes, we did. Who and how many do you know? If you don't want to say who, how many, because I'm thinking about tabling this till after public discussion or seeing if it can be tabled till after public discussion, I'd rather have the public get in and out and let them two or three attorneys wait. How many do you know? Attorney Wheeler, are you there? Yes, I'm I'm here. We have we have three. We have we have three. There's two outside and one one inside and I I'd rather if we could do this now so we don't have to pay them while they wait. Yeah, well, the state is more liable. I've been watching this water crisis on the three administrations now, and I'm used to attorneys getting 33 and a third of percent and the people getting whatever. So I don't mind. They can wait. I've moved the table this until after um, public discussion. There's a motion to table the executive comment. session. There's a motion to table the executive session until after public comment. Is there support for that motion? Is there support for that motion? Is there support for that motion? That motion dies for a lack of a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Madam President, uh, Madam President. Councilman Mayor. This will be real quick, but I thought I would hope that you would get in there. But if any discussion, any further discussion on the first round, and then is there anybody with a second round? But, you know, I handle it because once I see you clearly moving on, then I interrupt the second round, whether it's 30 seconds or one minute. My position is this. Um, this council is inconsistent when it comes to, in this particular case, public comment and so forth. I would ask the public to hang in there. Maybe the executive session won't be long. The Kenwood residents, I ask them to hang in there. Um, people don't want to discuss certain things, and 
Maybe we'll have two or three meetings before Monday. I'm up for it, even in Stockton, California. So my position is this. Um, I'll probably abstain on the vote for an executive session prior to um, public comment for the reasons it's inconsistent with the pattern of this council for some reason. And so um, thank you. Thank you. Is there any further discussion before we vote? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call on executive session. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yeah, I abstain on this vote for the reasons that it sends the, um, you know, conflicting message to the courtesies that's been given to the public in the past. So I abstain. Mr. Davis? Yes. Yes. Ms. Neal? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Seven yes, one abstention. So that is seven yes, one abstention. That motion carries. We will hang up and go. I need, to to know, I need to know how to get to executive session. So one of the ladies, please get counsel to make what he needs. So sure. we are recessed to go into executive session. Madam, Madam President. Madam President. <laughs> Can we request that they send the the number to all the council people? Sure. Okay. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. And to everyone else, if you stay on the line, they will be back. I'm on the line with the city council right now. Listening to WFOB 92.1 LPF in Flint may cause one to think, may cause sleeplessness, agitation, motivation, and a strong desire to get involved. In rare cases, some may experience euphoria, a sense of community, and a relief of futility. Some listeners have reported in-depth, informed conversations, a better understanding of diversity, and a strong desire to get along. Be warned that programming on WFOB 92.1 LPFM Flint is not for those prone to intolerance, prejudice, and or bigotry. Before ingesting WFOB 92.1 LPFM content, listeners are advised to seek the advice of community advocates, activists, and supporters. WFOB 92.1 LPFM Flint listeners are encouraged to do their own research and seek out opposing views.
leaves and the flower will die The colors will fade and you'll close your eyes Hold on tight to the glimpse of light Pick good over bad cause they both make you cry Pick good over bad cause they both make you cry Marjorie makes over a hundred thousand. We never see any of them pick up a damn thing, because all they care about is their bank account. Thank you for indulging the Anderson family. Word two. The next one is from Kelly Swanson. We're in the sixth ward, and we feel like our councilman does nothing. He doesn't answer his phone. He doesn't respond to emails. He's just full of hot air, and I bet he vocally does not support this. 9 p.m. ordinance because he's done nothing to shut down the drug houses and party stores here. Does Hot Air Herb Winfrey work for the Sixth Ward residents and homeowners, as it, or does he work for slumlords, corner store merchants, and tax dodging nonprofit millionaires like Glenn Wilson? Glendale Hills is turning into a dangerous slum because of Herb Winfrey. You've done nothing for this ward, Herb, and you are not using your city phone or email. Sure sounds like someone trying to dodge. Freedom of Information Act because of potentially illicit activity. Can't wait until you're voted out of office next summer. Thank you, Kelly Swanson. The next one's from Michael Ellard. He needs asking about the Court Street construction. Why can't this project be completed? Court Street has been a debacle from the beginning with no information available to residents affected by this. There is no sign this project is anywhere near completion. Calumet Street is all but destroyed. I called him. Constant traffic noise and dirt from Detroit. Never mind. Made it impossible to enjoy any outdoor time this summer. Cars, trucks, and equipment run stop signs and speed through the neighborhood night and day. We are very surprised a biker or walker hasn't been hit. As mayor, you need to contact the company and get information out to residents. I and my neighbors would like to know if this company is being fined for their inability to complete this project. Michael Ellard, 1602 Calumet Street. The next one is from Donna Baldwin. Thank you, Maurice and Beverly, for cleaning up Civic Park. Love, Blues, and News, the most entertaining and insightful podcast there is every Saturday morning. Praying you're successful with this new 9 p.m. ordinance. Enough is enough is right. Homeowners are terrorized, scared to leave the house after dark. Wish we could move to Flushing or Bloomfield or Fenton by the rich store owners. They don't want none of this mayhem near them or their families, but they push it on black folks all night. Bless you all, Donna. Next one is from Jackson Alexander. Can the city please enforce the no parking on front lawn ordinance? It's an issue all over and just gets worse. This is low class and ruins the perception of the city. I'm told some of the neighborhood enforcement officers they've hired think it's okay and refuse to write tickets for it. 
hope that's not true, but it, it would explain a lot, I guess. And hopefully the new police chief starts writing speeding tickets. I haven't seen a Flint cop give someone a speeding ticket in at least 10 years. I understand not wanting to be harsh on a poor community, but you have to draw the line with maniacs who drive two and three times the speed limit, weave in and out of traffic, and run red lights, often in school zones. Put these maniacs in jail and seize their cars. And I fully support the 9 p.m. store closing time. If I need gas after 9 p.m., I can easily get it on Center Road or Bristol Road. Flint needs aggressive and bold leadership or nothing will ever improve. Heck, even Walmart is closing at 10 p.m. in Burton and Grand Blanc. Nothing good happens in Flint past 9 p.m. Lastly, just want to thank Monica, Monica Galloway for her service. J. Alexander in the 7th. The next one is from Tamara Harris. Could you try to bring up speeding and reckless driving enforcement? Will Flint Police Department and State Police please write some speeding tickets and impound some cars for reckless driving in school zones? In, it, like reckless driving in school zones, no less. 30 per mile zones, and they go 70, 80, 90 per hour all day, all night. We've never seen someone pulled over from Mott, CC to Kettering U, and all the elementary schools in between. Not once in years. I'm also writing this evening to support Mayor Neely's plan to close all liquor stores and gas stations at 9 p.m. Please do this immediately. These bloodsucker stores have preyed on this town for far too long. Everyone I know with a little change in their pocket has moved away or wants to move away because of the late night crime, cr chaos, noise, and family destruction these stores promote. We all know what these stores are about. Let's not play dumb and let's not pretend these are honorable businessmen. These owners are all multimillionaires preying on our souls and robbing our quality of life. God bless Tamara in the first. The next one is from, I think I may have already read one from her, I'm not sure, Kelly Swanson. I'd first like to thank the clerk's office and Janelle for their tireless efforts during this pandemic and giving us a chance to contribute to the city's discourse. We are in the sixth ward and we're just so frustrated our councilman Herb Winfrey does nothing to help this ward nor Glendale Hill. Crime, blight, slumlords, group homes, and trash have never been worse. Herb does not answer his phones. He does not respond to emails. He insists we call on non-city issued devices. I think I already read this one. I'm really sorry. Sometimes they send in multiples. The next one is from Eleanor Jones, 5th Ward, Carriage Town. My husband and I would like to extend our support for the 9 p.m. ordinance to close all the gas stations and liquor stores. The gas station near us is open all night and it's nonstop issues and crack dealing and the clerk shot a man just a few months ago. The drivers speed in and out of it all night and you can tell most of them are drunk or high. Then another 24 hour day a gas station just opened on the edge of the ward on West Court Street across from the deaf school and power. How does that help this city or our neighborhood? It just drags us down and makes us look like a slum. When are our neighborhood interests going to take precedent, precedence over corner stores and gas station owners? If folks need gas after 9 p.m., let them drive to the townships of Burton, whether it's Corona, Miller, Bristol, Fenner, Pearson. All the quiet and peaceful suburbs do just fine closing down their residential gas stations at 9 or 10 p.m., but Flint has to live with 24-7 drama because nobody cares about black folks. I also saw an agenda item, a vendor for 140000 in electrical supplies. Is that to finally replace all the down decorative street lamps in Wards 5, 6, and 8 around Eisenhower, Powers, and Kettering? If so, thank you very much. But if not, why not? Jerry put in a referral about those light posts getting, back, getting put back up months ago. A dozen of them have been missing for over a year. Lastly, I wish Jerry could make a complaint about the blight department. The garbage and trash is just all over. We've never seen it this bad. This town is so nasty and filthy, it looks like a city that's given up. And parking on the front lawn is supposed to be illegal, yet nobody at the city enforces it anymore. I know there's lots of problems here, but sometimes it feels like nothing. And maybe some speeding enforcement in these school zones would be nice. Folks going literally 90 miles an hour down Chevrolet and University. 
Thank you all for serving, and I hope everyone's family is safe and healthy. Eleanor Jones, Pittsburgh. The next is from Robert. Problem. One is from Elise Bell. Dear City Council, I'm Elise in the fifth. The lovely Jerry Winfrey Carter is our council person. Motivated to write tonight because I saw on ABC 12 and NBC 25 that you're going to finally close down all the stores at an earlier hour. Just want to say thank you, Jesus. About time. And please consider having Blight Crew or Landscaping Company clean up I-69 and I-475 through Flint. Everyone makes remarks about how nasty it looks right when you enter Flint. Bless you all, Elise. The next is from Veronica Parker in the Ninth Ward. Ms. C Ms. Worthing is our councilwoman. Please pass that 9 p.m. ordinance to close all the liquor and gas stores at 9 p.m. It's an injustice that this poor black minor majority community is poisoned all night by these predatory owners while more affluent families in the suburbs get peace and quiet. These stores leech on the depression and hopelessness in this downtrodden community. It's so wicked. Our reputation has been destroyed. People mock us for being nothing but nasty water, corner stores, and crime. It's comforting to hear the mayor's office and city council may finally weaken their stranglehold on this community. Thank you, V. Parker, Ninth Ward. Next one is from Allison Mayer. Dear City of Flint, I just wanted to share a story that happened yesterday in Detroit as we in Flint rubber stamp all these marijuana shops around Flint, and they even tried to put one in Woodcroft Residential Neighborhood and pretended it was no big deal. The Woodcroft homeowners were even attacked and ridiculed. Well, a broad day, a broad day shootout just happened at a marijuana shop in Detroit yesterday. Detroit, Fox 2. This is a story. An attempted robbery at a medical marijuana dispensary in Detroit goes sideways for the suspects as the would-be victims put up a fight. Two people working inside opened fire on three armed suspects trying to rob the store. Now two of the three, three suspects are in police custody while recovering at a local hospital. She gives a link to the story. That's why we don't want this anywhere near residential neighborhoods. And it isn't just about rubber stamping too many marijuana shops in Flint. It dovetails on way too many liquor stores, corner stores, and 24-7 gas stations your predecessor ruined this town with. We absolutely love the early closing time ordinance idea. The draft is perfect. Please get this done. Thank you all. Be well. Allie. And that, Madam President, is the last one. Thank you so much. That brings us to public comment. Uh, I mean, um, Council response. We'll start with Miss um, Worthing tonight, if you don't mind. Yeah, I I don't have any comments. Thank you, Mr. Griggs. Mr. Griggs, did you have any public response? I mean, response to the public. Okay. Yes, yes, uh, yes. No, yes, okay, yes, thank you, sir. I, okay. I, I, had, I had myself muted. Uh, this is to uh, Ms. Ingram and Ms. Rio. Uh, the uh, more day, I think, across the states from the A1 and then Smaller lots, uh, less than 10,000 square feet, I believe. However, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's what business in a residence. Mr. Griggs, Mr. Griggs, I don't want you to lose up your time. Um, you're, you're going in and out. It's not clear, so I didn't want you to. Oh, okay. Not realize okay. it. You know, is it, is it. Can you make sure it gets time? You're better now. No, you were. Now I can't hear you.
Hello. Now we can hear you, Mr. Gregg. Oh, okay, good. Uh, anyhow, to again to Miss Ingram, Miss Perillo, Mr. Harris, uh, there are zoning regulations that have been in a draft stage for seven years, and you can see those zoning regulations down in the basement of City Hall at the uh, in the Planning and Development Department down in the basement. Uh, they're about an inch and a half or two inches thick, uh, but they go into what businesses are allowed or not allowed in residential areas. And when these regulations finally get approved, uh, then they'll be in, enforced, but they haven't been approved yet. And uh, now's the time to be looking at it. About five years ago, I had uh, off-street parking introduced into the zoning regulations where any business, residential business, has to provide off-street parking. Uh, and then to Miss Ellie Elise Bell, uh, you know, I adopted, uh, or we adopted, a three-mile three section of State 69 uh, four or five years ago. And I know there's trash out there, and... You know, you, you wouldn't believe all the stuff we pick up out on I-69, both east and westbound. And but I wish that other people would get hold of MDOT and start adopting sections of highway uh, there and on 475, too, that you mentioned. Okay, that's, that's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Winford? Thank you, Madam President, to all of the... Uh, all of our constituents that, that that responded, whether you were in person or whether you wrote, you know, sometimes we hear some really good things. Sometimes we hear some things that's kind of southward, as, as uh, I would use the term. But it's good to hear what our people are saying because then that's the only way or one of the ways, I should say, that we can, we can begin to address the issues. To my uh, issue or issues, to my constituent, Miss or Mrs. Kelly Swanson. Mrs. Swanson, I, I'm not sure what you mean by the Freedom of Information Act. I, I tried my best to listen, but I didn't catch it all. Uh, but every time you speak or send correspondence, I try my best to get in contact with you. I have left my number for you to call, and you've never called me on that number. You've never called me. I've asked you not to use the city number because I don't have the city cell phone. My cell phone, again, is 810-691-7463. I would really like to discuss some specifics with you because I'm not aware of what it is you're, 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 you want me to do. If there is an issue that you need me to address, I am willing to address it, but I've got to know what it is. And it's got, you know, uh, I've even, uh, as far as Glendale Hills, I'm in contact with Glendale Hills residents uh, almost weekly. And I, I, uh, I'm, 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 I'm in contact with the uh, president of the Glendale Hills Neighborhood Association. I've even inquired uh, of the president of the Glendale Hills Neighborhood Association that they can give you my number. Because when they want me, they call me or they even send it through my email. Uh, so if you really want to get in contact, my number is 810-691-7463. And I promise you, if you call that number, I'll either answer or I'll call you back. And if there is an issue that you need me to address, I will do that as well. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Ms. Winter Carter. Thank you, Madam President. Um, first, I would like to thank all of the public speakers and those um, individuals who also emailed their um, comments in. Um, I would like to say to Mrs. Jones, I want to thank her for um, for um, sending in her email. Um, I will save all of my comments about the neighborhood safety officers. Um, for tonight, we're going to have a special order 
and we're going to talk about enforcing the ordinances and um, and everything that you mentioned um, during your um, the reading of your email. And I think that's it. I um, um, I wanted to also say to my constituents of the Fifth Ward, if you have any complaints, issues, or concerns, please do not hesitate to call me. Call me at area code 810-397-3621. And um, I will help you to um, resolve your issues or concerns. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Ms. Fields? Yes, I'd like to respond to the first gentleman who spoke with complaints about the Holiday Inn Express. Um, I would suggest a couple of things. One, I'm not totally sure which ward that was, is in, but I would call your council person to get them to work with you on this. And I don't know if your company is Myself. still employed. Ma'am, here. One oh. second, one second, Miss Fields. Can you guys mute whoever that is, Janelle yeah. and Davila, and I uh, make sure that Miss Fields gets her time. One second, Miss Fields. Sure. Thank you. Go ahead, Miss Fields. Uh, okay. So my suggestion is, first of all, get with your council person, find out what ward that's in, and get with your council person to get you to help them with that. Um, Texting our police chief about if you think there's so many illegal activities going on, um, um, I, I would try to address this directly with the chief. Um, also, Holiday Inn is a corporate brand, and I would assume that the national, international Holiday Inn, that they have some connection, I'm sure they would not be happy to hear about the conditions with the bed bugs and the activities going on. Find out... Uh, who owns that or, or how you can, you know, get a hold of corporate headquarters and make complaints. So um, I guess that's uh, most of the comment I'd like to make. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Davis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'd like to say this for all of the residents in the city of Flint, this is Vice President Maurice D. Davis. Uh, it's time out for them liquor stores and their violations. I don't care where you live within the vicinity of City of Flint. They're going to line up because they've been a detriment in this city much too long. The blight, the crime, our extra resources have to be put over there. Enough of that mess is enough. And they get even boisterous when they get huffy about keeping and cleaning up their property. The lottering outside is in unsafe environments. And we ain't going to tolerate it another second, especially in my ward. I can speak personally. You know, people have lost their life, balloons on every corner. That's going to cease. We will be working diligently and having a conversation, discussion, even this evening, on the ordinances and everything else far is violations of them type of establishment and or gas stations ser slash service station. We are tired of it. All they do is take away from this community lottery and on and on and on stuff that people already in hardship do not need. Liquor, they do not need. But if you're grown, you can get that. But you get it at a reasonable hour like the homeowners are stating. Every homeowner under the sound of my voice, you understand. They're not giving away houses. We're going to clean up this city from the top to the bottom, but we must start somewhere with crime, and that's going to be them liquor stores and gas stations. Thank you, Madam Chair, for indulging. Thank you, sir. Councilman Mays? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Woodson, you spoke about the executive session on the water crisis. I don't know if it was the settlement of the water crisis or what, but I was not in that executive session. I want the city to know I'm a plaintiff. I'll continue to be a plaintiff, or I'll end up um, filing objections to the settlement with other attorneys. That lawsuit settlement, from what I know, it doesn't cover adults. Um, it covers children. It covers people with documentation. So we'll see as we draw close to the public details and the claim period. But I was not in that executive session. 
and um, I'll continue to talk about the water crisis that I have for the last four or five years. You got council people saying, what have you done, Councilman Mays? What have you done anything? Yeah, we were key players in the water crisis. Mr. Griggs, you keep saying five to four years ago you adopted or did something. I thought you was only on the council three years going in the four. That kind of baffles me. What are you talking about four or five years ago? you introduced and adopted. You have to listen close to what folks say, particularly elected officials. I've heard everybody talking about the liquor stores, the gas stations. But when we get into that discussion, I'm going to make it clear. I even seen the mayor's sample of four quadrants and a thousand calls, which they say it's about 2% of the police calls. The other 98% might be in the community. People waiting three, four hours for police, ain't but six cars a shift. The people that's proposing this cut down on crime ordinance, it's the same people who voted no to put police on the streets. This council has squandered, along with the mayor Neely administration, in my opinion, $24 million. I'll wrap up, and I'll get more into this when we get into the special order on it. How are you going to vote no to put police on the street to take care of these problems, but then get creative to shut businesses down? I look forward to the discussion. Thank you. Um, I just want to say thank you to all the residents that um, sent in their, whether it was written or spoke um, publicly. And so thank you. That brings us to petitions and unofficial communication. Madam President. Mr. Griggs. Yeah, I wanted to correct uh, Councilman Mays. Uh, Council, I wait, Mr. Griggs, Mr. Griggs, you can't. Mr. Griggs, what, that's what? out of order to me. Mr. Griggs, Griggs, please, Mr. Griggs, you are in violation, and so we will move on. We are at petitions and unofficial communication. Yes, we have one, Madam President. We are at communications from the mayor and other city officials. There is one. Any additional communications? There are none. That brings us to appointments. The first appointment is for the Human Relations Commission, Ward 8, Councilman Griggs. Does that that mean I can speak right now? No, that means you can speak on your appointment. We are at appointment 200422, which is your appointment to the 8th Ward. Yes. I don't know if Ms. Bowhouse is on the phone right now, but uh, uh, I went to other uh, people, constituents, and uh, came down with her. Uh, Actually, I made the appointment of her over a year ago, and uh, but then I... Point of order. Yes, point of order, Councilor Mays. Yes, point of order. Yeah, I thought y'all like to threw me out of meeting and unroll repeatedly. It needs to be a motion first. I don't know if the motion first applied, but that's my point of order. Thank you, sir. You are right. Mr. Griggs, please do a motion, and then you can discuss your appointment. I make a motion that we approve Ms. Susan Bowhouse for the Human Relations Commission or Commissioner. There's a motion to approve Susan um, Bowhouse for Human Relations Commission Ward 8. Is there support for that motion? Madam Chair. Mr. Davis? I second. It's been moved and properly seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. Griggs? Yeah, I just, uh, I had appointed Ms. Bowhouse more than a year ago, and uh, but then I was told to wait for an ombudsman. Then we got an ombudsman, and then I was told again to wait until she was ready. So anyhow, this is kind of long overdue, but this is uh, my best pick of the, uh, the group. And if you'd like to uh, have her speak or anybody would like to ask her questions, I think she may be on the phone right now. Uh, if you could please check. 
Mr. Griggs, I don't see her. If she has a different name or phone number, you'll have to let me know. Uh, be two three two. Nineteen forty two. It'd be Susan Steiner Bowhouse. You you don't have there? I can call her. I, I do, it's under a different name. I will unmute her. Okay, thanks. Okay. This is Susan Steiner Bowlhouse. I am present. Thanks, Ms. Bowlhouse. Does anybody have any questions for Ms. Bowlhouse? Well, Councilman, Mr. Griggs, I'll go ahead and um, are you done? I am, yeah. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to have discussion on this appointment? Anyone else? Madam President. Yeah, Madam President, we're not having committee meetings. We're not having governmental operation meetings of no kind. And these appointments have came on the agenda and I'm not sure exactly what's going on with these human relations departments because if people have been talking outside of meetings, I don't know. But this would be the first discussion. I'm not going to vote on them. I'm not going to move on them. I think they should be tabled. But my position is this and why. How many members are on the Human Relations Commission and where do they come from? Through you, they, who, it ain't anybody who know. Because we got to, I got to find some stuff out. Who appoints them? How many of them and where do they come from? Madam President, I, I can answer that. Mr. Gray. Yeah, uh, one is appointed by each of the nine council people, and then they report to the ombudsperson. Thanks. And is the Human Relations Commission nine people total? I believe it is, plus the ombudsperson. Do anybody know? Is Angela? Angela. Ramirez. <laughs> Um, is that approved by Councilman Galloway? Okay. You're good, Angela. Um, okay. Yeah, so yeah, it's uh, not nine members um, that make up the Human Relations Commission, and they're each appointments by the for, from the nine wards by the council. Okay, so those are the only appointments, those nine, no other appointments to Human Relations Commission. That is correct. Are all of them staggering terms, are all of them three-year terms, no matter when they start? Mm, let me double-check that. Yeah, I want to see what the charter say. We haven't even discussed the makeup and the intent. And I can't vote on this stuff without knowing under this new charter what's going on. I seem like I've seen an appointment from Grand Blank reappointments. Right, she's looking at that. Do anybody see those reappointments? Ain't that the Human Relations Commission as well? And how would they be reappointed under the new charter if we ain't never appointed none? This is Angela. Um, information. Point of information. What's your point of information? Is does Mr. Mays have his agenda? Because the other appointments are for the DDA, the, okay. the reappointment for the DDA, not for the human relations. I have access to an agenda, and um, I do recall now that Lois Fletcher and um, Lewis Hawkins was reappointments to the DDA. I can appreciate that. I'm now. 
I looking at the Human Relations Commission, but no, I was mixing the two. Um, this is Angela. Um, under 3-512 of the Human Relations Commission, under subsection B, the Human Relations Commission is comprised of nine members, one from each ward. Okay, do it say anything about any staggered terms or three-year terms or anything of that nature? Okay, let's see. Oh, and the per that. and the purpose the purpose of the human relations commission. I'm just can you read it in the record? Yes. Um That's just yes, what would uh, happen in committee meetings before I make an appointment. Yes, as in three dash one five five one twelve five one two A um and the ombudsperson shall organize the Human Relations Commission charge with the responsibility of reducing unlawful discrimination and increasing mutual understanding among the residents of the community. Okay, I'll look at it, uh, Ms. Wheeler, and to the council. You know, this council can vote on what they want to do. They can approve it. When we get to the 1702, Kenwood. Uh, Mr. Griggs, I'm just going to be frank with you. I'm suspicious of your recommended appointments because of what then happened with Ms. Sorensen. I'm suspicious of you not really living in the 8th Ward and living in the 6th and operating that business. I'm suspicious of Ms. Sorensen living in the 7th but operating in the 6th. And now you got an appointee who I can't even talk to. But you thought I could. I don't know. She okay. might be a nice. Excuse me, please. This is Susan Steiner Bowlhouse, the appointee yeah, from Mr. Please, Alan Griggs. Please, I would please, wish please, to. Point of order. Point of order. What is your point of order? Um, first of all, I, I think. What's your point of order, Councilman Mays? She came just butt in, but I'm hearing and I'm glad she did, but still, less than she could say I'm here and then I'll take it from there. That's right. And so. Um, just just well, for all appointments, all wait a minute, Councilman Griggs, for all appointees, <laughs> and until someone allows you to speak, you cannot just speak up, Mr. Griggs. Yeah, well, in well point of order, order, he didn't call us privilege motion. I got the floor. Right, and Councilman Mays, you do have the floor. So, Mr. Griggs, just one second. So, go ahead, Mr. Councilman Mays. Yeah. So, she is on. Yeah, Madam Chair, I threw you to the appointee if she want to introduce herself and got something to say. Now that she's come on board, I would like to hear from her. All right, Councilman Mays, um, you said that you would like to speak to me. I am, yes, a member of Councilman Griggs's ward. And that is where it stands. Um, Councilman Griggs put my name into nomination for the Human Relations Commission. I believe it was over a year ago. And I have been standing by. I have been participating and listening to the council's um, membership and to all of everything that you have had to say. And I am offering myself to be an impartial and a good servant to the Human Relations Commission representing the 8th Ward. Uh, Madam President, through you to the um, proposed appointee, ma'am, can you tell me your name again? Susan Steiner Bowlhouse. Steiner Bowl Steiner Bowlhouse? Yes. Did I say I it right? Steiner, Bo Steiner Bowl House. Yes, you did, Commission May um, Councilman Mays. I did submit my curriculum vitae to the to the council, and I believe that it was presented to you, and you should have that before you. And I hope that you have read it, and that you, if you have any questions about it, please address me now. 
Yeah, you. that's what I'm trying to do, Mrs. Um, Standard Bowhouse. Um, let me ask you this question. Do you live in the um, 8th Ward? You're not going back and forth like some people I suspect, are you? I live, I have been a, a voting resident in the 8th Ward for the last 13 years. Ms. Steiner Bowhouse, now, if you've been waiting for this appointment for a year, you sound sincere. I'm liking you already. Can you tell me, Councilman, you're welcome. Can you tell me, Councilman Mays, what is this Human Relations Commission under this new chart? I'm, I'm suspected in a year you didn't glance at it. Hit me to what's happening and what you figure you'll be going in there to do. Well, as I can consider myself going in there to do, I mean the new, the new um, proposal has, as has been presented, is still in flux. Um, I believe that it will be to work, not as an ombudsman. Believe me, I fully respect our new ombudsman, who is now in place, but it will be to work on an interior fashion to work with all members of the community, to work with them, to work with all of the complaints, all of the possible identifying factors where we can become stronger and where we can go forward to make the greater Flint. I am just one of, one of many who are going to be appointed to ward representatives for the Human Relations Commission. I am just one, and together with all of the other members who have been appointed to these commissions from the different wards, we will get together and work together as a unified vision for the city of Flint. I'm sure you will. Let me go piggyback on that. As you know, you might have me, so we'll see. I'll see. But let me ask you this question. In what area? Councilman Mays, your time is up. Even after they added um, the allotted time for the appointment to speak. So if you'd like to oh, you're telling me with Angela and the... Okay, Ms. Steinman, this is the type of stuff that messes me up. I would move the table this appointment until um, we can have an adequate discussion. May, may, um, excuse me, sir. May I ask please, when no, that might be? Me, because me, hello. Wait a minute, please. Please l allow us to go through the motion, and, and when this thing goes on, we will give you all the information you need. Um, okay, and thank Davina, you. And, you know, please, please mute in case, just to help. Um, there's a motion on the floor to table this until when, Councilman Mays? Until these rules or to you allow an adequate discussion. You know, I don't. You know, I don't. I didn't know the time was like that. Them people talk way more than me. Um, so there's a motion to an, an an adequate time. Is there a second for that motion? Is there a second for that motion? Is there a second for that motion? That motion dies for a lack of a second. Is there anyone else that would like to speak for their first round? Madam Chair? Oh. Councilman Grigg, you've oh. spoken for your first time, sir. All right. Is there I'll anyone wait. that would like to speak for a first time that has any questions? If not, then we are on our second round. Mr. Grigg. Okay. Uh in light of the reasons that uh, Councilman May says he doesn't trust anything I do, I did want to correct you that uh, I adopted a three-mile piece of uh, Interstate 69 before I was a city councilman. I did have a productive life before city council. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak for a second round? Anyone else? Anyone else? Hearing none, roll call on the appointment, Madam Chair. And, um, um, clerk. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? Uh, looks like Mr. Mays left the meeting. Mr. Davis? 
Yes. Yeah, point of point of yeah. order. What's your point of order, Councilman May? Yeah, I hit the hang up button instead of the unmute button on this roll call. Then we'll get to okay. the, go ahead. What's your base? Uh, I abstain as I'm, I was cut off in the middle of um, talking to the candidate. I abstain for that reason. And Ms. Fields, I think I heard you, but could you repeat? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Seven yes, one abstention. The motion is um, passes with a seven yes and one abstention. That brings us to our next appointment, which is... Madam Chair. Wait a minute. Mr. Briggs? Yeah, I just need to, uh, if you could repeat what I said to Councilman Mays uh, before he hung up. Councilman Griggs, wait a minute. Mr. Griggs, you're getting ready to be disruptive. We are passing. Point of information. Remember, what is your point? No, Councilman Mays, what is your point of information? Is it something Mr. Griggs want me to hear? No, that's yeah. not that's you not can going say to happen. It. And so this is the thing, Mr. Griggs. You will have time during your final comments to revisit that. But we are moving on. So we are on the next appointment, which is 200430. The appointment to the Human Relations Commission, Gregory A. Easton for Ward 7. And I can't make the motion. I'm asking my Madam colleague, Chair. Councilwoman Field. Madam Chair, um, since this is your appointment, but as Chair, you can't make the motion, I will make the motion for you. I move the appointment 200430 to the Human Relations Commission of Gregory A. Easton in Ward 7. Point of order. What's your point of order, Councilman Mays? I don't know where you and Miss Fields get that rule from. There's no rule under a nine member body that Hello? a chair can't make a motion. So I don't know what y'all are saying, but my point of order is whether it's mute or not, you and Miss Fields is both misguided about what a chair can do. Thank you. There's a motion on the floor to approve the appointment of Gregory Easton for Ward 7, Human Relations Commission. Is there support for that motion? Madam Chair. Mr. Davis. I second. It's been moved and properly seconded. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that Mr. Easton is on the line. Janelle or I'm Jennifer, is on the line? Thank you, Mr. Yes, Easton. Yes. So if you'll just wait out so that I can see if my colleagues have any questions. And so... I appointed uh, Mr. Easton. He is in the seventh ward. He has um, been in the community for quite some time, and I think that he'll um, be a great asset to that um, board. And so is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Yeah, Madam President. To you, to Mr. Easton. Good good evening, Ms. Deese. Hello, Mr. Mays. How are you doing? Fine, and you? Just fine. Ms. Deese, and can you, were you on the phone listening when I was asking the other uh, proposed appointee who has now been appointed some questions? Did you hear those line of questions? No, I did not. Okay, let me ask you this question, Ms. Deese. What under the new charter, if you've looked at it and if you know, what is the purpose of this Human Relations Commission? Because we're not having committee meetings. They haven't discussed what it is. We got these cockamamie rules about five minutes on appointments, no committee meetings, interviewing people. Tell me, Mr. Eason, because I haven't looked at it in detail. Do you know what this new charter is dictating that this uh, Human Relations Commission do? No, I do not. And Mr. Ethan, do you know how many members is on it and who appoints them? No, I do not. Well, Mr. Ethan, I know you. 
and you just <laughs> and answered them question honestly, and I just had an honest conversation with you about what I do know and don't know and what these cockamamie council rules is um, hindering me from doing on these important appointments. I think I know you somewhat. You were the city administrator at one point, correct? Yes. I know the family member as far as who um, you're married to, because you're married, correct? Yes. And I'm going to vote for you because of that and because of your honesty. You didn't try to make up no answer. You say you ain't looked at it. I know you're intelligent enough to handle it. I'm going to see what this human relations department do in the area of discrimination and others. I was asking the other appointee. I think you qualified to handle it. You can handle some of these positions these folks got on the council and more. So I ain't going to have a problem. <laughs> I mean, what I want to do, Mr. Eason, is abstain because of these cockamamie rules, no committee meetings, no government operations. People don't be knowing, and they act like they know, and they're so professional. But because of your honesty and the way I do know you and your intelligence, I want to vote for you. But if you hear me change my mind because of some mess and abstain because of the cockamamie procedures and rules, don't take them if, take it personally. Is that okay? That's fine with me. Thank you, Ms. Lee. Is there anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? If there's no further discussion, roll call on the appointment, Madam Chair. Uh, no, I'm the Madam Chair. Um, Madam Clark, I can't see this way. <laughs> Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Ms. Fields? Yes. Ms. Woodbury Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Vote is 8 0 or 8 yes, 0 no. Thank you. The vote is 8 yes, 0 no approving Mr. Easton's appointment to the Human Relations Commission. Thank you, Mr. Easton. You're welcome. Thank you. That brings us to our next um, reappointment, 200431. Is there a motion? Madam, Madam President? Yes, Councilman. Winfrey? I move for the reappointment of 200431, and that is for Robert C. Kettle. Uh, he's being reappointed to the Downtown Development Authority. There's a motion to reappoint Robert C. Kettle. Is there a support for that motion? Madam Chair. Mr. Davis. Madam Chair. I second. It's been moved and properly second. second. Is there any discussion? Yeah, Madam Chair. Councilman May. Yeah, through you to our staff or whoever is this gentleman on the line. I don't see him on the line. Now, Madam Chair, doesn't his he show a grand blank address? He does. And I'm concerned. Why would I want Grand Blank to govern um, Flint's downtown authority? I don't care who it is. What is the logic in that? Can anybody answer who is on the line and connected with the downtown development authority, any colleague or anybody in the administration? Hearing none, I'm going to move the table until There's the next council table. meeting. There's a motion to table until the next council meeting. Is there support for that motion? Is there support for that motion? Madam Chair. Ms. Winfrey Carter. 
I'll support that motion. It's been moved and properly supported. Is there any discussion on, wait one second, y'all, one second. Um, I, I always have a problem with which of those motions has discussion, one has discussion, and one does not. Lay on the table fifteen. So a motion to postpone temporarily or to resume consideration shall be decided without debate. So, you will call. Mr. Davis? Yes. Ms. Fields? No. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? No. Ms. Worthing? No. Mr. Mays? Yes. Vote is five yes, three no. The vote is five yes, three no. That is tabled until the next council meeting. That brings us to the reappointment to the DDA for Lewis Hawkins. Madam President. Mr. Winfrey. I move for the approval of 200432, the reappointment of Lewis Hawkins to the Downtown Development Authority. There's Madam a motion Chair. to approve, Mr. Griggs. I second that. It's been moved and properly seconded. Is there any discussion? Madam President. Madam Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam President, through you to our staff, or is Mr. Hawkins on the line? I don't believe so. You do or don't believe he so? Not. He is not. Okay, does that not show a grand blank address? It does. It does. I would move the table that to the next council meeting. And um, before I make that motion, do anybody know of any um, qualifications or residency requirement for appointments and boards? But, you know, if you do speak now, I'm talking to anybody. If not, nobody's saying nothing. I would move the table this just as well as I did the other one until okay. Monday. Okay. So are you making a motion or would you like me to re read the... Well, I can hold up on the motion if it's something that you think is relevant, and I said anybody, so. So it says, members shall serve in the interest of the citizens of the city of Flint, except for compelling reasons stated prior to appointment, shall be residents of the city, in all cases, at least three-fourths of the members of all multiple member bodies shall be residents of the city of Flint. That is six. Dash 101 B number five on page 58 of the council, um, the city of Flint charter. So the question is, Councilman Mays, how many people are on that board and is three fourths of them residents of the city of Flint? And then once that's determined, then outside, I mean, it's, you know, they can live anywhere. Well, if I may, Madam Chair, uh, before I move the table, that I think that when you read that, you must read that if they from outside the city, the request for appointment must be accompanied with a compelling reason. You can't skip over that compelling reason being brought forth before you get to the three-fourths. The only way in some cases, from my interpretation, that they get to be outside appointments if their appointment come with a compelling reason. 
I don't know if the compelling reason for me would be because they've been on there and they got knowledge, but I didn't see a compelling reason. So for two or three reasons, I moved to table this into the next council meeting. There's a motion to table until the next council meeting. Is there a second for that motion? Madam um, Chair, I'll second Ms. that motion. It's been moved and properly seconded. That is, um, That motion is made with no discussion. Roll call, please. Linda Fields. Coleman to the next council meeting. Ms. Fields? No. Ms. Woodbury Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Vote is seven yes, one no. The vote is seven yes, one no to postpone that to the next council meeting. That brings us to the reappointment downtown development authority for Lois Fletcher. Is there a motion? Madam Chair. I move for the reappointment to the Downtown Development Authority to Flip Resident Lois Fletcher, number 200433. There's a motion to approve resolution 200433, reappointment of Lois Fletcher, attorney Lois Fletcher, to the DDA Authority. Is there support for that motion? I'm sure. Mr. Davis? I second. Is the movement properly seconded? Is there any discussion? Madam President. To you, to our staff, or to who's ever listening, is Mr. Fletcher on the line? No, he is not. Okay. Mr. Fletcher, as I recall, also serves on the uh, he chaired the local officers' compensation commission. I know they got rules about how often and when they meet through you, Madam Chair, to the city attorney. We don't know of any rules or anybody listening, whether it's the city attorney. We can appoint and people to multi, um, well, various multi-member bodies. Would that be a fair statement, Ms. Wheeler? Not to more than one board. Yeah. Um, I need to look to see. Um, and I know this is an authority. This is an authority that's established. Um, this is uh, through state law, so uh, I don't yeah, think it's not wrong with it. I just want to ask on the record. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to give it to you right this second. I'm looking at Yeah, I know I'm imagining it's a problem because he's he's served in that in both capacities um, under in, in for many many years. But it's a, I I am still looking for that information. Yeah, because if he was being reappointed, he'd been serving on the DDA as while he was chairman of local office compensation, and uh, as we speak. All right. You all said, Mr. Mays? No, she said she, she was checking something out. We don't have committee meetings, Madam President. I'm going to do committee meeting work the best I can under the five-minute rule, please. Thank you. I'm not done. Thank you.
Madam President, through you to Ms. Wheeler, did I hear you right, Ms. Wheeler, when I was speaking to the President, you said you were checking something out? Well, yeah, I am, but I, I, I'm not finding it that fast as, as you need right. it, unfortunately. Um, so, you I'm know. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Well, I'll see whether I abstain or vote in favor of him. I have no problem with him. I'm knowing. I just want to dot my I's and cross my T's under this new charter and not knowing it and not having committee meetings to do the work. So, Councilman, so we're, Councilman Mays, are you going to let everybody else in and come back to you while she looks oh, at you it? Oh, you can do that. Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay, that's perfect. So is there anyone else that has any discussion about Mr. Fletcher? Anyone else? Oh, okay. No one else, Councilman Mays. So, Attorney Wheeler, how are you doing on that? I thought you know, I have to you. And Attorney Wheeler, it seems like you gave. Yeah. It seems like we discussed this multiple times that there is no violation for someone to serve on more than one board. Yeah, I don't really. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that's yeah, not true. I'm sure just you did. did. I'm oh, sure we talked oh, about that on multiple occasions. But I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know if we've talked about it on multiple occasions. I'm not going to be characterized at that. She's already stated this is an authority versus a, I don't know if it's a multi-member body or not, because we appoint um, multi-member bodies, and this might qualify under the definition. But I'm going to stick with my question, whether you try to belittle it as multiple times. I think not. So um, so I'll have, I'd like to put in a request from our staff that by the next council meeting, which was the, the two prior to this one, that were postponed to the next council meeting, I would like a list of those that serve on the DDA board and their terms and, and their addresses so that we can see how many members are on there so that we can see what the percentage is according to the charter and then hear of any compelling reasons. Um, so, Janelle, do you and Davina have that? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And so I'm all set. If there's no one else, Councilman Mays, um, this is your, your second round. No, I'm still on the first. You asked was would I allow Miss Wheeler to continue to look and you come back to me. Don't trick me on the second round. This is the first. I, I, I gave you a courtesy and you asked for it publicly. Councilman Mays, um, no, sir. But but you're the only one that still wants to speak. And so you can... Ma'am, I'm just waiting for an answer. I'm not trying to speak. Don't miscategorize what's going on here. She asked for courtesy, and I think we should give her that. We should indulge her. You just got a, a certain way of trying to deal with me, and you're not going to be successful because I'm smarter than what you're trying to characterize me. We waiting on Miss Wheeler. Everybody knows that. Council Mays, um... I am not trying to categorize you or anything. All I'm saying is you are the only one left and that this doesn't denote two times. Point of order. When you say a courtesy, I, am, you, I will get your, what is your point of you order? You out of order, point of order. When I say point of order, all talking you should stop and you should ask what's my point. What is your point of order? I'm on the first round based upon your conversation, not the second. Regardless of how many people Janelle, want to How speak. much time does he have on his first round? Two minutes. Thank you.
Madam Chair? Councilwoman Fields? I call the question. There's a motion to call the question. Is there support for that? Point of Madam order. Chair? Point of what order. Is, what's the point of order, Councilman Mayne? Two people can't have the floor at the same time. She would have to have the floor to call the question. I've got the floor. We're waiting politely on this wheel. Y'all can't get around. Me. One second, Ms. Fields. Ms. Attorney Wheeler, where, where, do you have the ability to find that tonight? Because we can't allow Councilman Mays to wait for you to try and find something that he wants now. We're going to discuss this at Monday's meeting. How far are you from locating that document? I'm far. There's a lot of sections i got to look at. So, it is. Um, it is. And so, yeah. <laughs> Councilman Mays, you can move on. We're not going to, I'm sorry, you can have your point of order. You point of order. order. What is your point of order? You don't dictate who get the floor and can ask anybody on staff a question. I done seen y'all mm -hmm. take recesses mm -hmm. and look. Mm -hmm. You're not going to discriminate. Let me finish my mm -hmm. point of order. Mm -hmm. You can't discriminate because things ain't going the way you want. I've got the floor and we waiting on something. I've given Council courtesy. Do you want me to read it to you? And you are I'm, more than I'm reasonable enough to make a decision when Miss Wheeler responds. No, Just, see, Council you know, Council you can't Council have everything your way because it don't go the way you want. If you was asking Council the question, you, you'd be. Point of order. What is your point of order, Miss Field? Mr. Mays is being argumentative and disruptive. I believe he is out of order. He is absolutely being argumentative and disruptive, and he is out of order. Mr. Mays, if I will read it to you again. We will not wait for Ms. Wheeler. She has tried to answer your questions, and if you would like to move on with your last two minutes of your first round. I would appeal the ruling of the chair. There's an appeal of the decision of the chair on the floor. Is there a second? There's an appeal of the decision of the chair on the floor. Is there a second? There's an appeal of the decision of the chair on the floor. Is there a second? The appeal dies for a lack of a second. I have no problem using my last two minutes, but I'm going to use them in this way. I'm suing this city for being discriminatory and this council. And I, done, I got plenty of video that shows when Miss Galloway wants a question answered, whether it's to Miss Wheeler, Clyde Edwards, or whatever, we ain't never had this. The person looking for the answer, in this case, Miss Wheeler, she can say when she's exhausted and then what's what. This council ain't having committee meetings. I don't have to get caught up in y'all mess and be a bad council person. I'm going to be a detailed, good council person. I've watched Kerry Nelson, Jackie Poplar, Juan Twez Davis, Vicki Van Buren, and the rest. And so that's why I like putting you on display for one, Ms. Galloway, Ms. Fields, and everybody else who acts discriminatory. I don't care if y'all try to rule me out of order because I had to flow and y'all wanted to get it to call for the question and Ms. Galloway jockeying. Oh, Kate, you're right. Um, yeah, he's being disruptive and disorderly. No, I was not. I don't care if Jerry Winfrey, Carter, Maurice Davis, or Mr. Winfrey don't second an appeal. That means nothing to me. I made it for the record. I was not being out of order. I had to flow. Miss Galloway was interrupting being out of order. That was something between me and Miss Wheeler. Miss Wheeler's smart enough to say, um, how long it would take her. Can she not do it? Do she need more time? Did she look and ready to rule? That's how that go. And then based on that, since I had to flow, I make a motion whether I want to postpone, vote yes or no, in light of no committee meetings. So I don't care if this is a silent counsel on when I appeal. I don't care if I run alone. I done ran alone before and seen five council people disappear and we'll try a new batch. The, the problem I got is Miss Galloway trying to talk condescending and think that I'm a fool. 
and I ain't. You gonna end up looking stupid trying to rule me out of order when I had a flow and ain't saying nothing waiting on Miss Wheeler and So that is the answer. Yeah. Thank you. And so, Attorney Wheeler? Yeah, as I say, like I said, I, I tried to do a search of the entire charter and uh, specifically the section of of board appointments. And so I, I did a, a another limited search of no more than one, and I did not see anything um, so far that shows that you can't serve on more than one board. Um, like I said, I just did a did a search tonight. Um, I'm, I'm glad to to do a little bit more in depth tomorrow. But from what I found so far, I have not seen anything specifically so far that shows there's any prohibition, at least in the charter, from serving on more than one board. Madam Chair. Well, um, Councilwoman Field. All right, I believe Mr. May's time is up. I would like to call the question. There's a motion to call the question. Is there support for that motion? Madam Chair. Ms. Worthing. I support that. It's been moved and properly supported. There is no discussion on call the question. Roll call on call the question. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? Mr. Mays? I abstain for the reasons that the record would clearly show the shenanigans and the, un and the interruptions and out of orderness of Miss Fields and Miss Galloway while I was waiting patiently for Miss um, Wheeler to rule what she did. So I would abstain for that discrimination and different treatment as I try to take care of the people's business of the city of Flint. Mr. Davis? Yes. Ms. Fields? Yes. Vote is seven yes, one abstention. The vote is seven yes, one abstention. The call the question passes. That brings us to the motion that is before us to approve the reappointment for Mr. Fletcher. Roll call, please. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yeah, I abstain on this vote based upon what I previously stated on the record about the shenanigans and the disorderly interruption of me when I have the floor waiting on an answer from Ms. Wheeler to try to do the business of the people of the city of Flint in light of this council majority vote. No committee meetings. I abstain for those reasons stated on this record. Mr. Davis? <coughs> Yes. Ms. Fields? Yes. Ms. Winford Carter? Yes. Vote is seven yes, one abstention. The vote is seven yes, one abstention to approve that reappointment. That brings us to special order. First special order is a special order for 1702 Kenwood, special order by Councilman May on the status of 1702 Kenwood, include, including what is being proposed for that location. Councilman May. Yeah, when I requested this special order, I requested that somebody from building inspection, Chad and or Mike Ryder be here. I don't know who remembered that request. Was they communicated with? And is Suzanne Wilcox here as well? I requested certain folks to be here. Um, are they here? 
Uh, this is Suzanne. I am here. Suzanne, what about Chad and or Mike Ryder? Did they get any communications of my request? Do you know? Um, Chad and Mike are not here. If you have questions uh, related to building and safety inspections, I should be able to answer them. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see. But when I request some specific people, I would like for this administration to supply them. Is that a fair request, Ms. Um, Wilcox? Um, I'm the department head for planning and development, and I'm here representing building and safety inspections. So, Ms. Wilcox, it is it your position that you blocked me from getting to Chad and Mike Ryder? Is that your intent in no. the statement you just made to me? Well, let me ask you a specific question. When I request Mike Ryder and Chad, um, even though you're over that department, are you saying that I cannot get to them? I have to talk to you. I'm saying I'm here on behalf of Planning and Development, representing Building and Safety Inspections tonight. So, Ms. Uh, Wilcox, do you believe that I'm lying when I said I requested those inspectors who have more specific knowledge than you? Do you have all the knowledge and license that they do? I do not. I'm here representing. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Let's try to get it straight. Yeah, believe me, I'll ask questions, but I'm going to first lay a foundation and a special what I requested. When I request people with license and expertise, that's who I want. That's who I need. Ms. Wilcox, have you um, in that department, Chad and Mike Nim, had an opportunity to do an in-house inspection? Have Ms. Sorensen agreed to that yet? Last we talked, you were saying that y'all were trying to arrange it. Update me on that. No, they have not had an opportunity yet to do an interior inspection. They have been working with Ms. Sorensen as recently as today. Um, they did issue a citation um, on any interior renovations, but they have not yet gained access to the house. Ms. Sorensen, um, from what I understand, was on the phone with uh, Mike today, and she is supposed to be coming down to pull permits and pay fines and costs tomorrow. What do you mean they issued a citation for, did you say, in-house renovations? Um, it appears from review of photos that um, we received that there were some interior A window was put in. Done. Interior, exterior. I know about the window. Interior. What about the window, the exterior, what we can see from the outside? Is that a renovation that you are concerned about as well? Yes, it is. And that has not been cited yet? It was cited. Um, there was a citation issued, yes. For the exterior as well as the interior, you say there was a citation issued for the interior. What aspects of the interior got cited? For any renovations that look that appear to be completed without permits, and there were no permits pulled for windows or any interior renovations, so the citation um, was issued based upon those um, renovations, which include that window. So that means you could you haven't been inside, you don't know the details of those renovations, but you issued a citation in case there was some. And then you've seen the outside window renovation, and you included that in the citations as well. Am I understanding that? Correct. And it appears from the pictures that there were interior renovations outside of the window. The window was one piece, but it appears that there were some interior renovations um, based upon exterior photos. So based upon that review, that citation was issued. And the citation only asks for um, fines, it doesn't, or issue any cease and desist orders? Because we don't want to do double jeopardy. We don't want to fine them 200 or $100, and then they done got by on what the residents is complaining about. What is the extent of the penalty of the fines and or citations? Can you tell me? Essentially, the 
the inspector, um, that, that's a court, um, it's a court case, the inspector will go to court and ultimately um, the, the owner has to come into compliance with the ordinance, which means that if there was work done um, on the interior and it's determined that uh, via the court, then the owner has to, depending upon the extent of those renovations, the owner has to pull all proper permits, pay all fines associated with that, and depending upon the extent of the renovations, work may have to be removed so that um, the inspectors can see the level of work that was completed on the house without pulling permits and without doing inspections. Have you, can you issue any cease and desist orders or can you request them through the court? I would believe you could. It goes through the court. But you have not, your department haven't requested any cease and desist orders? Or as have as they? As we are aware, there is, no, there is no interior work going on at this point, and that is um, yet to be determined when, uh, when our inspector is able to gain access to the building, um, and that has not happened yet. Suzanne, let me say this. It kind of puts you in a bind, in my opinion, and I got the right to have my opinion. You're citing a sitting planning commissioner who you rely on as a group to do certain things. That's kind of conflicting to me. That's why it's what makes this thing so funny. And I'm here to tell you, um, you know, I've been charged with crimes, and I'm looking at prosecutor late now. I got a call from the state police. They wouldn't charge Mr. Murdoch, and we're going to work on that soon as I get back. But the point is, when you got to build an inspector or inspectors who won't show up on my request, and you issue in citations and don't know the extent, but you know some, and you ain't requesting a cease and desist order, and you got residents who's turning me on, turning you on, because they've been looking at these renovations. You got a zoning board of appeals department who's approving variants and don't know about this illegal activity that some of my colleagues, uh, particularly, I don't know if Mr. Griggs was that concerned because I asked him to call a special meeting with me about it, and he told me right in front of the residents he would not, and that's his appointee. So we made some headway. Now this court date and these fines and no request for a cease and desist order, let me switch gears now and ask you this question. Doesn't the city council have an opportunity to change and amend zoning ordinances as it relates to land use. Specifically, in this case, if we wanted to amend the land use ordinance and put these type of homes in a multi-family zoning, would your opinion say we have the right to do that, yes or no? Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. I know the answer. I know the answer would be yes. And if I'm not cutting you off, I want to say this to Mr. Griggs. Mr. Griggs, I know you got a house operating as a business, but in A1 zoning or single family residential zoning, the ordinance says 25% or less of those homes can be used as a business not 50 percent not 75 percent so forth and so on are you familiar with that ordinance miss wilcox um i am familiar with it yes and so we got a little conflict going um miss wilcox how long would it take you for your department to work with legal and draft up an ordinance where these type of things, if the council approve it, can be in multi-family zoning versus single residential family zoning. How long do you think it would take to draw up an ordinance of that nature? Um, I would defer to the law department um, for that, that they're the ones who draft ordinances. We would certainly work with them on that, but that is really a question for Angela Wheeler. To you, Madam President, to Ms. Wheeler, how long before we can get that type of ordinance moving? Do you know? 
Um, I, I don't know offhand. Um, I mean, like I said, we need to, uh, Suzanne's department and my department, we need to sit down and, and discuss it and see what all we need to put into it. So we'll we need to confer first, and then we can give you an ETA. Well, I know I met with the residents on the invitation, and I've heard my council colleagues, particularly Mr. Griggs, say it's nothing the council can do. It's out of the council's hands. Um, the state allows it. No, we regulate land use, and we can determine what goes in single-family zoning-type situations and we can determine what goes in multi-family zoning type situations. I had an issue with this in the first ward. Let's go another step further, Ms. Wilcox. When the Zoning Board of Appeals sent out those notices, do you know how many people they sent them out to and what they, who they were required to send them out to? Did they shortchange the residents, even though the zoning had to do with the variance for the porch? Um, was that proper, or did they miss sending notices to people? Do you uh, know? The process, the process for sending out zoning notices is um, a simple parcel. Um, survey so it depending upon what the ordinance requires in this case it was everyone within 300 feet um, so there's a survey that is developed it's, it's strictly based upon the parcel level data that we have I understand because we pulled it recently there were 38 I believe it's 38 residents within 300 feet of that house and so it's an automatic um, mailing that goes out to all residents within 300 feet of that house. Do you have a record that all 38 got that mailing? I do not have a record of who that was sent to, but I know the process that was utilized by the then zoning administrator, um, and it has been, the process has changed over the past several months to document exactly which residents get sent but the the uh, the actual survey data that's pulled that process has not changed so if four residents if they can demonstrate that four residents received it i would um i would almost guarantee that 38 residents received it it may have been discarded or thrown away or whatever but i i Based upon what I know about the process that was utilized, I, I would bet that all 38 residents received it. Well, I would request that from this period on, I don't want to guess or I don't want to bet. I want those 38 copies filed on file with the city clerk's office to keep our records so that we can see. Now, if that's done or if you have a record, at the next council meeting, I'm going to ask that this special order stay on. And I'm going to ask that Mike Ryder or Chad, with that expertise and license stuff that you say you don't have, that they be here. And that in, in your department, you help facilitate this. It'll be up to the council, you know, whether they do it first, second, or third, or do it at all. But that's my request through you to one of them, and they can be at home. They can call in, and you, the department head, you can call them. If it's at 7, you seem to be here, and you could call them. It's no big heavy lifting to pick up the phone, people with expertise, because now I'm going to ask that the legal department draft up a ordinance on land use that will move this stuff from single-family to multifamily, as we've discussed about here. I want to introduce a draft ordinance and see if I can get that passed to help um, these residents with their requests, while other council people think it ain't nothing the council can do. Uh, Madam President, in the sake of time and with what we've learned here about these citations and violations, it's becoming real what these people were telling me in the meetings I attended, I'm going to ask that this um, special order be tabled until the Monday council meeting that you've talked about coming up, and I so moved. 
you want to you wanna vote on it, or do you just want me to say okay to it? Well, you know, I'm always courteous to my colleagues, but you know everybody pressed for time. No committee meetings, work piled up. This has been out there for a long time. I know those residents is listening. I know Mr. Griggs and them is listening. I don't care if the residents talk. I don't care if Mr. Griggs talk. I've had, I've said what I had to say, and I'm believing these residents more and more about the allegations toward that property and Ms. Sorensen, who is um, Mr. Griggs' pick. I'm thinking Mr. Griggs don't understand the job that we can do as it, re- as it relates to the legislative body, <laughs> not just him, some of my colleagues. So I've said what I had to say, and I've made the motion and so forth and so on, but I'll, 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 I'll wait on the motion if somebody got something they want to say. There's a motion on and the floor. Here. To, there's a motion on the floor to table this until the next council. Point of order, Madam Chair. Order, council made. Point of order. What's your point of order? I've said if there's some colleagues that want to say something, I don't know if Miss Fields <laughs> wants to or she <laughs> wants to second it, but I don't want to lock us in when I at least said that. Speaking for a second, I asked you a quick question. And you went on to say some things. You made a motion, and I was asking, because council rules do not require a motion. And so I asked you a simple question. I didn't interrupt you, and you went on and on and on and on. And so there is a motion on the floor to postpone this to the next council meeting. Is there a second for that motion? Madam President. Mr. Winfrey. I support the motion. It's been moved and properly supported. That has no discussion. Roll call on the motion to table this until the next, uh, as a special order to the next council meeting on Monday. Roll call, please. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? No. Ms. Worthing? No. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Ms. Fields? No. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Vote is five yes, three no. The vote is five yes, three no. That motion carries. That brings us to the next special order, which is Special Order 200423, Special Order Neighborhood Safety Officer in Blight, as requested by Ms. Winfrey um, Carter. Ms. Winfrey Carter. Thank you, Madam um, Chair. I um, I wanted to um, ask that the neighborhood safety officers come to council to uh, discuss the um, the ordinances that is related to blight. Um, For example, um, people parking on the lawns, and um, I have a couple of issues here in the fifth ward that I um, want the blight department to to pay special attention to. And I just want them to, um, you know, talk to us about their responsibilities and let's talk about enforcing um, the ordinances. So um, are there any blight officers on the, I mean, neighborhood safety officers on the line? No, there are not. So so, um, what happened? I don't know. They asked me questions, but they're, I, I, they're not on the line. Okay. Madam Chair. Well, Ms. Winfrey Carter has the floor. As soon as she says, Ms. Winfrey Carter, when you're done, you say, I'm done, and then I'll move on to the next council piece. Um, let me see Janelle, if I can find out. Yeah, let me see if I can find out why, Ms. Winfrey Carter. Um, point of information. What's your point of information? 
I um, have to leave due to uh, family obligations, um, but I will be back on Monday. Thank you. Thank you. I sent an email, Ms. Carter. I'll have to let you know when they respond. You know, you know, this is I'm I'm frustrated because I think I think uh, Mr. Winfrey had it on our agenda um, for a special order for blight for the uh, neighborhood safety officers or or the the you know and and I've had this on the agenda as a special order. Now we need to we need to discuss what's going on with the ordinances that the neighborhood safety officers are re responsible for enforcing. Janelle, I would ask that you invite them to the council meeting for next um, Monday, for Monday. Yes, ma'am. Madam Chair, I'm, 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 I'm finished. Madam President. Thank you. Wait one second. So, Ms. Winfrey Carter, you want this um, special order moved to the next council meeting? Yes. Okay. We'll do that. Mr. Mays? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, Madam President, thank you. Uh, Ms. Winfrey Carter, thank you for putting this special order on our agenda because blight is one of the top priorities with police. These are the calls that I get. Councilman mm -hmm. May, First Ward, police and blight. You got blight officers. I think the one in my ward seemed like his name, his name is Martin. Now, picture the First Ward, the geographical area. Carpenter, Jig Jack, Round Pearson Road, the DuPont, Cryo Road, and Saginaw. I, I see it the geographical area. You got blight officers ticketing cars parked on people's yard. And I didn't ask them to bring me the ordinance. And they brought it to me. But we ain't had no legislative committee meetings. I wouldn't care if they parked on their yard. If you're going to enforce that until we change or amend the ordinance, and some of these cars be good cars running. You know, I don't know the rules about can you park on the lot you just bought. We tried to get the land bank to lead the driveway. They took it out anyway. People bought the lot. But anyway, I would rather them call Murdoch and that crew and say I see a mattress, a couch, on Verdun in between Piper and Russell. Been there for months. I done called it in. I talked to Lindsay. We got tires between home, on Home Street, between Cloud Road and um, Oxley. That's Jeanette Edwards. Murdoch and Neely came to they block club me. They trying to talk about me, and she said, hey, they said they do the tires, and the tires still there now. I know who put them tires there. Mr. Price, he was a good man. That's who they should have put on Black Price. But anyway, my position is this. Ms. Winfrey Carter, I look forward to this special order, and I look forward to this council realizing they've been disrespected repeatedly. Blight officers won't come. Our greatest power is to inquire, ask questions, so we can operate government. Inspectors and stuff won't come. The mayor, he set the trend. He didn't come and ain't came really to talk about government operations and state of emergency. He want to give an update. I already know the update of the city. I know where couches and blight is at in the first war. I know what the neighbor's saying. I know what I'm telling the block club. A council person can't give no order. They can't direct. They can inquire. They can do budgets. But they can't say, go pick up that blight. That's the administration. We give them money. 
This council, Ms. Winfrey Carter, voted six no and three yes to put almost a million dollars for black. Mm -hmm. Now 20 million been squandered. Because Eric Scorsoni ain't no appointee. <laughs> he told him to spend 12 to 14 million prematurely. And ain't nobody got no money from the state in the pandemic like we was getting it in the water crisis. Because you ain't got the right folks speaking. You got finance chairs and directors who hold in two positions. I don't want to get off in a tangent, but I remember that vote. Six no for blight. Six no for police. Them the biggest two calls I get. So you didn't hit a home run. I wouldn't care if you never second my appeal. I'm not talking about blight for you. I'm talking about it for the first ward residents in my block clubs, Miss Edwards. John Harrison, Miss Spencer, in the cold de sac, cross from Vernon Chapel. That's who I'm talking about it for. I say get a front end load in some trucks. I seen some people look at blight in my ward. I thought they was cleaning up. I come back. It's still there now. They so look at it. So first ward, we gonna get that blight. And they might wanna clean up Kate Fields Ward, Maurice Davis Ward. I'm a Democrat. I don't like Trump. I ain't voting for Trump. <laughs> so yeah, I wouldn't care. What's your point, point of order? order? What's your point of order? Mr. Mays is way off topic. Political affiliations of council members is not relevant to this special order on blight. I believe we've already discussed this. I think it's time to move on. What is your point of order? Point of order, his discussion about who has what political affiliations is not germane to the discussion on blight. So, can, Councilwoman Fields, can you give me a council rule so that I can properly rule on your point of order? Well, I don't have it in front of me, but you have to, in discussion, stay germane to the topic. It's obvious that political affiliations are not germane to the topic of blight in this municipality. Councilwoman Fields, I, I'm, I'm, I hear what you're saying, but as the chair, it's my responsibility to rule on the charter either Robert's rule or our rule. And so if you'll look that up, Councilman Mays, then, then, we'll, then I'll rule on that. Councilman Mays, I'm asking that you would stay germane to what we're dealing with in this special order. I am. When it comes to Biden and Trump, Trump could have been and sent us some black money. He could have sent us some black money, but he didn't. I'm no. talking about black and no. federal, state, and local funding. I got that right. Councilman Mays, please now. Yes, ma'am. Let me do this. Let me do this. You see, hey, she just interrupted me. You should have said that. You can, she can't use point of order to take the flow because she, she might like a, 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 a politician. But I don't. I look at the flow of money. Councilman Mays, cease talking for a second. As the chair, I have the right to bring all council, anybody in the meeting, into focus. And so we're not going to attack anybody. I want you to stick with where we are. Even though there may not be anything specific in the rules, let's not make this a circuit. Would you talk about the blight specifically in Flint and no political affiliation or what any of your colleagues are doing? And then, Councilman Mays, if you're not... I mentioned no colleague. I mentioned that federal Council funding. Mays, stop. Federal, stop. federal funding and state funding can help local funding. I talked about finances, twenty-four million, and I'm talking about a six to no, a six no vote to move nine hundred thousand, almost a million to clean up blight. Just as I said, them same six voted for no police. These the two big areas. I'm talking blight. She just don't like where I go to get my money from. 
I try to get my money with the Democrats and Biden them. I ain't trying to get Trump ain't gave me no money in four you years for black. We're done with this. We are done. Okay. We are done. Is there you ain't, I ain't, ain't done with it. You might be, I ain't, but you can interrupt me. It's a special order. It ain't no rule. You out of order, but you know, you just mad because I'm getting with Jay Fields and Ness and everybody else. Councilman Mays, but this is, Take this your is a if you're going to stick to the dream, I'm not going to do this with you guys tonight. Okay, so let I'm me do this kidding. with Blight. Let me do this with Blight and take 30 <laughs> seconds and call it a day. Let's not bicker over real. I know and you know that them Blight people should come up to this meeting at her request, just as them inspectors should come. And we shouldn't tolerate it. I know that Mr. Winfrey and Kate Fields and others, they won't vote to subpoena people, but we're wasting a lot of time begging people to come to these meetings. But when you start slanging them subpoenas, all that nonsense will stop. I yield the flow. Y'all don't want me to be real. But I'm not going to act like I ain't in no middle of no heavy politics and people making commercials and the news talking. I ain't studying Channel 12, 5, M Live. I'm a newsmaker. God bless you. God bless the citizens of the city of Flint. Go Democrats. Madam Chair. Council, wait a minute, Council. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Ms. Fields. I just want to say that it's almost 10 o'clock at night. We haven't even gotten to the uh, master resolutions, and I am not here to Mr. listen to Mr. Mays talk off topic uh, indefinitely on whatever comes into his mind. If we can't keep this tightly to the agenda and on topic, I'm going to have to leave this meeting. I'll, I'll stay and see how this goes forward. Thank you, Ms. Fields. We appreciate any time you give us to complete the business. So this is what I want to say um, to my colleagues. Um, it is unacceptable for Blight not to show up. But what I'm more concerned with, not just that, but I'm concerned with the fact that Mr. Murdoch won't show up at the request of the ombuds person who is trying to investigate some different things. And so if this council is not going to hold the Blight Department, which is under the leadership of Mr. Murdoch, who is under the leadership of Mayor Neely, then we need to reassess what we're going to do. And if the ombuds person cannot get a response from that department, what are we going to do as a legislative body who has the authority to assist them in getting answers to the concerns of this community? And so with that, I, I, I yes, this can be on the next council meeting on Monday. That brings us to the last special order, which is a special order for the Community Development Block Grant. And that's Councilwoman Winfrey Carter to discuss whether the uh, mayor is allowed to hold up contract for agencies that receive Community Development Block Grant money. Go ahead, Ms. Winfrey Carter. Thank you, Madam Chair. Now, um, I think if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, I think I asked and um attorney Willer, I think I wanted to find out. I asked if you could give us a legal opinion. If not, I would like for you to give us a legal opinion. Um because we voted on August twelfth. 2019, or it was presented on August 7th, 2019, and we voted on August 12th, I believe, um, to award several organizations the um, CDBG grant, okay? I was told, we were told by Suzanne Wilcox, that a couple of the organizations did not get their uh, their grant money. I found out that one of the couple of organizations did um, get their grant money, but the 
second um, organization did not get their grant money. And that organization happens to be McCree Theater. <sighs> My question mm -hmm. is, how is it that the mayor can not give them their money and the council has already approved the um, grant money? Yeah, um, Ms. Angela, I'd have to get more information on what happened um, after that time, but yeah, I can I can provide you a legal opinion. Point of information, Miss Winfrey Carter. Yes. Can I make a request that you not ask that that be a legal opinion, but that it be discussed in an open setting so that we don't have to worry about waiving privilege well, since this is yeah, dialogue just, in the public. Let's discuss it. Let's discuss it now. Let's discuss it because you know what? It's a disrespect. It's a disrespect. I have never known of a mayor to totally disregard what the council has approved. It's a disrespect. When we want to talk about disrespect, let's talk about it. And I'm opening it up to the to, to my colleagues. Because Madam President. We have made I'm, I'm done speaking for now. I'll save my time. Yeah. Madam Mayor President. Councilman Mays and then Ms. Ms. Um, yeah, normally I would say, you know, I would yield, but I'm not yielding because of the call for questions and the maneuvers. So I got the flow. I would like to say this. Now, this is my political opinion. This is my privileged political opinion because I'm a councilman. The voters of the first ward gave me a voice. Now I'm going to say this. This McCree Theater at one point, I don't know if it still is, but it was housed in the first ward. I got an interest. When we voted to give Big Brothers, Big Sisters money in McCree Theater, we knew what we were doing. And there are times when the administration, like they did with W.T. Stevenson and other folks, whether they black or white, they hold up their money. But politically, I know what I know, 100% what I know. People who was associated close with the Weeb administration has been taunted and dealt with by Neely Nim. I even got beat up talking about it in roots. And I wish Prosecutor Layden was listening because Detective Reese told me and he wants me to get a copy of his report. I'm the victim. Murdoch the suspect. A jury can try it. I don't file false police reports. This administration has been messing with folks associated with the Weaver administration. You listen close to Kate Fields, she don't even scrutinize me. Point of information. What's the point of information, Ms. Fields? Are you aware, Madam Chair, that Mr. Mays is doing the same thing going off topic? Do I have to call a point of order? Um, you can you can call a, a point of order if you if you if you'd like. And so what's in the point, point of, of order? order. Mr. Mays is way off topic again. Mr. Mays, I'm asking you to be fair to the constituents and this community so we can get business done. Can you please stick to this grant block, block grant dollars? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank yes, you. Yes, ma'am. And that's exactly what I'm doing and been doing. This money been held up politically because Mr. Winfrey, who administers and works in an administrative capacity in the McCree Theater, and Ms. Winfrey Carter, She's just trying to be a good council person. 
Mr. Winfrey is probably going to be a county commissioner. I bet you. And so politics, Miss Fields, and political affiliation holds up grants and money that this council approved. I'm being real, and I'm telling the community, and I'm telling my colleagues, we're not stupid. We've taught, worked on this behind the scenes for months. Release that money. Give them a the theater their money. You know, we hear talk, well, they got 400000 in the arts millage. Yeah, I helped work on it to help pass it. I wanted them to. I want McCree Theater bursting and black folks and institutions to get money. And I wouldn't care if the Republicans endorse Neely. Give them people their money, man. That's what we say in this field. That ain't no point of order. That's point of political talk out in the open, in the open meeting. I don't have to be a behind the scene politician all my life. I went to school for politics, Michigan State. I'm Jermaine. I don't want to say what I say, Tito. I'm helping her try to get this money broke loose. And she trying to be a good um, council person. And you are saying, oh, she's fighting because it's her dad. No, we fighting because it's right. We voted for this, nearly holding it up. And I want them to know I want the McCree Theater, and I ain't, ain't my daddy. He did. He was a pastor. This is a community. I wouldn't care if it's Pastor Flynn, Pastor Mays, Mr. Winfrey, Woodrow Stanley. I want the money released when we vote. You know the principle, Ms. Fields. When we reallocate block grant money, that's what means something. We got that right. So... I am Jermaine, and Miss Winfrey Carter, just like you, I reserve my time. But this is special order. Ain't no time to reserve. God bless the citizens of the city of Flint, and God bless the people I represent. I'm going to fight for black, young, old, white, Hispanic, for what's right. I ain't studying what you're talking about. Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Winfrey. Yeah, uh, I, I, I want to put this in the form of a uh, of a uh, point of information, and I got to put it in a question form. And I and I guess the only way that I can do it is to say, you have the floor, does, Mr. Winston. I'm sorry. You have the floor. Thank you. Uh, um, does my colleagues? Uh, understand or realize that when Councilman Mays mentioned Mr. Winfrey, he's not talking about this Mr. Winfrey. He's talking about uh, another Mr. Winfrey, who I believe uh, uh, is the person who I know is the person who uh, has not received uh, the the monies or the block grant that we, uh, that we approved. And he, uh, my colleague also mentioned that he would be a, uh, he is a county commissioner. He's talking about that same Winfrey. I just wanted to make sure that the public didn't, didn't confuse Councilman Winfrey with Commissioner Winfrey. And I wanted to make sure that the, uh, the community didn't confuse uh, the, the, the director of uh, McCree Theater, Winfrey, with Councilman Winfrey, good man, but I just wanted to make sure that our identities are protected. Thank you, Madam Chair. Were you all done, Mr. Winfrey? I got you, Ms. Fields. You don't yes, have to Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Ms. Fields? Yes. I... I'm not sure what all contracts or agencies weren't completed under when council voted the last time on these block grant allocations. But I do have a question. I, I think there is an ethical consideration. Ms. Winfrey Carter is directly related to a, a mother and father who run the McCree Theater. Um, I'm not sure, but I believe they both receive salaries uh, from that organization. I don't know if 
part of their salaries were intended to be paid out of this portion of block grant. But I would say that we need to actually go all the way back to when this boat was made. I wasn't really aware of these family connections, but I think there could possibly be a direct conflict of interest uh, on Ms. Winfrey Carter even voting on this if it is going to benefit her family directly. Uh, I believe it violates the ethical standards of our city, and I think she should have recused herself to begin with, and I think this conversation, especially with the emphasis on the one contract that she's referencing, I think it's problematic. I think it's an ethical consideration, and I would like the um, Angela Wheeler to weigh in on this. Number one, should Miss Winfrey have recused herself on this vote because her her family members were benefiting from the vote, and two, should we even be discussing this? Is that could she be discussing this in terms of ethical considerations and conflict of interest? Miss Angela. Um... Let's see. So just looking at the ethics section, that's um, one dash one dash six oh two, but let me just find a particular provision with regards to disclosures. So if someone, let me just read this to you, uh, and this makes a little bit more sense. It says here, it says, by state law, any public servant who in a discharge of official duties would require to take an oath, official action, or make an official decision that would substantially affect the public servant's financial interest or those of associated business or immediate um, family member has to find this charter must take the following action. So the action really includes um, preparing a written statement describing the matter for action or decision um, for the potential conflict of interest, uh, deliver a copy of that statement to, well, it says your statement to the employee's immediate supervisor, if any, and if an elected official or appointment, deliver a copy to the city clerk. So, um, and if there's insufficient time to do so, then orally inform the official body um, of service or the committee of the potential conflict. So, and let me just see what the definition is for immediate family in this particular definition. I just so so we can be clear on what that is. Okay. Yeah, so it says here, an immediate family defined by the charter means a person who is living in the same household or related to the public servant as a spouse or as any of the following, whether by marriage or blood or adoption, so a parent, child, brother, sister, uncle, aunt. I'm just going to read it so I'm, I'm, I'm clear. I'm, so I'm being, so I'm reading fully everything. Aunt, uncle, niece, nephew, first cousin, grandparent, grandchild, father-in-law, mother-in-law, son-in-law, daughter-in-law, stepfather, stepmother, stepson, stepdaughter, stepbrother, stepsister, half-brother, half-sister, brother-in-law, or sister-in-law. So um, just based on this reading, and it, it looks like it, it just requires a um, it requires a disclosure. 
of a potential conflict. Okay. And then, well, mm. I'm sorry. No, I'm just trying to read on to see what else is said here. Um, and since there are symptoms printed by the law, the superior must assign the matter if possible to another employee. Well, that's for an employee. Um, oh, wait a minute. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm missing a page here. One second. Oh, it says if there's no immediate super, super superior, the, the public servant must abstain, if possible, from influence over action or decision decision in question. If the person is a member of city council, um, if the person, if, if the public servant is a member of the city council, council is excused from taking part in the action or decision in question. Um, it's a Point of public public reformation. Reformation. Attorney Wheeler, where are you reading from? One dash to two uh, under section on pages twenty on pages twelve and pages thirteen under disclosures. D. Adidas and David. of information from the charter yes from the charter point of information point of information so what's your point of information do um case do you realize that we are discussing whether or not the mayor is allowed to hold up contracts for agencies that receive community block grants it has nothing to do. You know what? This has to do with the principal. I would be Thank fighting if, um, if, if other agencies' uh, monies were held up. Madam Chair, I have the point of order. I have the floor. You don't have the floor. One second, Miss. Well, she's doing it right now. What, you finished your point of information. Is that correct, Miss? I'm, I'm done. Carter. Thank you. I'm Thank done. You. So, go ahead. Um, Attorney Wheeler was finishing and... and so she did a point of information, Ms. Stevens. Yes, I was just I was just going through the specific point um, as far as a disclosure being made. Um, if the person is able to be excused from taking part in the vote, but it also says in, in sub D, in sub after D in sub C, it says if a public servant is a member of the council, council per council person is excused from taking part in the action or decision in question. And the public servant is not permitted or is otherwise unable to abstain from an action in connection with the matter. The public servant must file a statement to describe the potential conflict and the action taken uh, with the city clerk. So if you're able to abstain, then, you know, still you should make the disclosure and, and, and um, abstain but if you're not able to abstain, then um, file a statement describing the potential conflict and the action taken with, with the court. And you're, and you're weird, Attorney Wheeler, as you're reading me, because this is a lot to digest, and so you started out and said where if the person was related to someone, where was that at? Um, that's in the... That's in the... Oh, let me go back to it. Page 12. It's in the first section, D1. So it says, uh, and, 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 and I want to, so point of information. It says make an official decision that would substantially affect the public service financial interest or those associated business or immediate family. Is that correct? You're reading from there, right? 
I'm reading from the disclosure section, subsection D. But you started with. I started with the first D, section, right. D1. D1. But it says in there substantially affect the right, public service. Right. Okay. Yep. I just want to make sure. Okay. Go ahead. That's all I have. I mean, like I said, you, 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 if if you if you know this goes for all council members, if you if you know that someone in all those different categories that are enumerated based on the definition of the ordinance, then you have to first disclose. And I think I've only had this happen once on the council so far. I, I don't know if if, um, if you all have the same memory that I do, but I remember um, Councilman Davis. Uh, um, had to do with disclosure when the when this first arose this new charter um, it was uh, based on um, uh, Ms. Beverly um, uh, an appointment to I think the uh, historic district commission so he made the disclosure and then he abstained I, that's, that was my memory of it and you know just thinking of one well, it's just, like it's just something that needs to be done and then he didn't vote on that one thank you so, Ms. Ms. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, I still have the floor. All right. Well, first of all, I guess I would like to make a referral um, to a council office in the minutes that they could tell us whether when we voted on those block grants that included the McCree Theater, whether Ms. Winfrey Carter made a disclosure and or if she abstained from the vote. And from my understanding, and we all interpret sometimes what what we hear as a legal interpretation, we're not always clear on it, but from what I'm hearing, um, I believe that it's a conflict of interest uh, for e- even this discussion to try to influence. Now, I do understand the distinction that the principle of the thing was what Ms. Winfrey Carter started out with. And I think we all are well aware of where reprogram money comes from. It's because different organizations, for one reason or another, normally don't fit some criteria, so they end up never getting a contract. So even though the money has been awarded, and I don't know if that is the situation with the McCree Theater, I don't really know what the situation is. I don't know what the or- other organizations are, but Ms. Winfrey Carter herself, the only organization she specified and talked about was the McCree Theater. And her parents, I do believe, both received a salary from the McCree Theater. So I think it is definitely a conflict of interest for uh, her to have even voted on that and now to be discussing it. So um, I think we should move on, and if we have to ask for a legal opinion, actually, on that vote and whatever that happened in the past, we can do that. But I think it's pretty clear. What's your point of information? Uh, uh, Does my colleague realize that uh, the McCree Theater was not the only agency that Councilwoman Winfrey uh, mentioned. Do, are you uh, no. That no, I actually only heard her mention that one. Um, but I would be interested to know what other organizations did not receive contracts and why. Um, you know, I'm aware from other conversations that Reverend Flynn's organization never signed contracts or never could finalize the documentation needed to sign contracts on Black Grant. And I think that money had to be reprogrammed. So I think each organization might have its own separate set of uh, issues. So, you know, if there is a list of them, um, I would make a referral then to um, planning and development for those list of organizations that have been awarded a grant but have not received them and for planning and development to come forward and to... Um, I guess, uh, defend why they haven't had signed contracts. But I I think uh, Ms. Winfrey Carter is really on shaky ground here trying to push this issue. 
Thank you. Madam President. Great, Councilman Mays. I'd like to speak because I have not spoken. Um, it's going to be interesting when we go back to that um, vote, but what we are talking about today has nothing to do with what Ms. Fields is talking about. The reality is I spoke with the mayor personally, and there isn't an issue. He was looking at the situation that went on with COVID, and one of the things that I share with him is COVID had nothing to do with it. That money was assigned to them back in August of 2019. Ms. Winfrey Carter didn't bring it up. I brought it up originally along with some of my other colleagues. And one of the other ones that didn't receive their funds, Ms. Fields, was Big Brother's Big Sister. And they didn't receive their funds until June or July of this year. And part of the reason why they probably, in my opinion, received the funds is because there would have been enough council people that would have stood strong for them. And I, and I say that because I believe that Mr. Guerra went through that program. So he wouldn't have been one that would have voted to block their money any longer. And so I am going to be interested in that. The other piece of that is, if I'm not mistaken, um, the, our attorney was there. I don't know anybody that doesn't know that um, Miss Winfrey Carter is related to uh, Mr. Winfrey. And so for it to be raised today to say that she would be responsible in saying that why would anyone, regardless of whether it's unfortunate, because she didn't say anything for a long time. And so it's going to be interesting for my colleagues to turn this into an ethical issue and I'm going to be interested in finding out what the word substantially means, because if I'm not mistaken, that block grant dollar was only for like $40,000 or something like that, because we moved money from it. So it is um, going to be um, interesting. And it's interesting that my colleague is raising so many ethical concerns. So I look forward to that discussion as well. And so with that, Councilman Mays, Madam President. I'm asking that we move on. Uh, do our master resolution and, and be out of here. Go ahead, Councilman Mays. I look forward to the master resolution. I also look forward to the council discussions. I also look forward to if you want to recess and come back tomorrow. It ain't nothing but a phone call and we got business. Let me say this. When you look at the council body and the majority, and it might not fit the technical aspect of the charter, but guess who is the judge of the charter? I know Mr. Davis know <laughs> of the relationship. Of course, Mr. Herb Winfrey know of the relationship. Monica Galloway know, I believe, and I know. And that's the majority with Ms. Winfrey Carter. Now, technically, Go back. Don't just look for the minutes to see if she voted. Look to see if any of us, including her, with the acknowledgement in the audio and video, Miss Fields, do your homework. I'm not sending the legal department to do it because I it was divulged. You can't just look at the minutes. You got to see if it was divulged to the body I hear. I'm not going to get into that with Angela that y'all wouldn't let me get into, and I just watch y'all do the exercise of reading out loud, going through it. That's all I wanted to do earlier. Y'all discriminate. But my point is this. Don't you worry and don't you fret, um, Miss Winfrey Carter, because they ain't answered why Kate Bill sent out that illegal memo yet. I filed that before she brought this up on you. That's why I tell this council. Y'all got to take these investigations seriously. I subpoena Kate Fields on why she sent that confidential memo from the legal department to Phil Schultz, Abby Ellis. Abby Ellis, the one who turned me on because she did the documentary, America Divided, Something in the Water. Don't vote for him. Read this. Final you order, Madam Chair. Once again, Mr. Mays. Mr. Mays is totally off topic on some rant that I don't think anyone's interested in. Ethical concerns, Ms. Fields. You opened up the door to talk about ethical concerns. And so, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mays, 
is talking about ethical concerns in his opinion. I appeal your ruling. There is an appeal of the decision of the chair on the floor. Is there support for that appeal? Uh, is there support for that appeal? Mr. Greed. I support. There is there is a appeal that has been done. There is a support for it. As the chair, I am telling my colleagues why I'm ruling the way that I am. Ms. Fields raised ethical concerns. She raised that someone is unethical and that and had the attorney deal with it. And so Councilman Mays is sharing what he believes to be unethical. And so that door was open. That was not a part of what this uh, special order was. But Ms. Fields went on and on and on, and no one said anything about it. And so now Mr. Mays mm -hmm. is talking about what he believes to be unethical, illegal email. And so that is my ruling. Is there any discussion from this council on the appeal? Yes, Madam Chair. Councilwoman Fields. You are confusing things. The entire topic of ethics wasn't opened. The ethics was addressed in reference to the actual topic of the special order. So your logic leaves much to be desired here. And Mr. Mays is lengthening these meetings unnecessarily by continually going off on his own little political or personal grudge rants. It's not, his rants are not referencing the actual topic of the special order, and I do not believe he is on topic, he's not being germane, and you are allowing him to do that, and you are allowing to, this meeting to go unnecessarily. So I will be voting against your ruling. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Madam President. Madam President, I'm going to use all the political I got to try to make sure that Kate Fields ain't voted president because she attacked Ms. Winfrey Carter ethically when the subject matter was a grant. Ms. Fields, we're in a appeal, ma'am. You're so, correct. You're what, correct, what Madam Chair. Yes. Yeah. What is your point of order? There is no point of order while there's an appeal on the Thanks. So even even though he was off topic yet again, I understand that. Yeah, thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Mays. My allegation that you got to have clean hands. You can't mm -hmm. be the pot calling the kettle black. And I know in an open meeting when you make certain allegations of unethical conduct of a fellow or even a, a woman colleague. That's serious. But I want the public to know you unethical. And you gonna attack off topic. Did nobody say nothing about Jermaine? You could have waited. And so you did open that door. And I want the public to know you unethical first. I might be unethical third. But the paperwork is filed on you. The charge has been made, and here you want to come at everybody. Any dirt you can find or think you can find. We know, and you can't just check the minutes and see if she voted. You got to check the record. Was there any discussion of who her daddy was openly in the, to that body? And then if she violated, it come before counsel. But it shouldn't come before counsel before yours. And yours been out there a long time. So Miss Winfrey Carter, relax. You got a long wait because Kate Fields is in line first. <laughs> this starter is jacked up. Jacked up. And I'm going to make you pay attention by using it on you like you trying to use it on us. Yeah, I said us. You cannot be the president. You all said, Mr. Mays? Yes, ma'am. I'm I'm building a puzzle. This is serious business. People's livelihood is at stake. This lady will try to take her own colleague's head off. 
on some minor infractions like they major in a public meeting, and I'm going to rule, I'm going to vote with the chair. You opened it up. You just constantly do stuff. Gave me the finger, said I'm a racist. I said I'm an Eric May. You are Eric Macy's. You cut it out, Miss Fields. You cut it out. Thank Just you. Just go for bad. You go for bad. Is there anyone else that would like to discuss Madam this? Madam Chair, Madam Councilwoman Carter. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Miss Fields, you got your nerve, okay, to talk about somebody being unethical. When I received an email before I even got sworn in telling me not to vote for Councilman Mays as president. Now, I thought that was very unethical. In fact, you set the tone of ethics on the council. Okay? So let's not talk about being unethical. And, yes, Charles Winfrey is my father. And I am proud that Charles Winfrey is my father. And I will fight for Charles Winfrey and everybody else and every organization that did not receive their grant. I'm going to fight for them. Now, you take that. And I will be voting to support the chair on this uh, appeal. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Hearing none. So, and I just want to read also into the record under the ethics section of the charter, 1-602 under number 7, use his or her official position in violation of applicable law to improperly influence a decision of the mayor, city council members, clerks, appointees or employees. So I would say that to um, influence the decision of the council vote on who would be president with the uh, email would definitely fit. And so I ruled the way that I ruled because this was talking about, she turned it into an ethics discussion. And because she didn't like what was being discussed, that's why I ruled the way that I did. And so with that being said, there will be a roll call. She has appealed the decision of the chair. For those that vote yes, you support the chair. For those that vote no, you support her appeal. It takes five for her to win her appeal. Roll call, please. Mr. Gregg? No. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? No. Ms. Fields? No. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Vote is four yes, three no. The vote is four yes, three no. The appeal of the King Seals. Councilman Mays, will you go ahead and wrap up, sir? Yeah, let me wrap up real quick. It's going to be very, very important that we put this city on the right track. Quit chasing these petty rainbows. They're not going to come true. Focus on the big picture of the city. Focus on the people that we serve. In this instance, the people who we serve is in a nonprofit organization, and they got a grant held up. Everybody with influence should be asking the polite question, why won't you release their money, man? Is Suzanne Wilcox on the line still? I am. I'm still here. Suzanne, what is the technical holdups if you know? of why this money haven't went to the McCree Theater. Uh, I believe it's been signed by the mayor and they have their, I believe it's been signed by the mayor and they have their contract now. So what do that mean, the contract out? Have the McCree Theater signed it, executed, and they waiting on the city to execute something? 
Um, as far as I understand, um, I think they've had their contract review conference with our staff person, and I believe their contract is in their hands, and I will verify that. But I, and so it has been. Is, Mr. is Mr. Edwards on the line? I mean, do it look like it's moving forward, Suzanne? What's going on? Technically, do we need to ask yeah. that the that you and the mayor, um, Mr. Edwards, whose hands is it in? I mean, you administer this yeah. stuff regularly. Have you seen one held up this long? Are you are you is, speaking is that directed to me, to me or to yeah, me anybody, or? anybody? We all cool. We good. You ain't gonna get muted. Hop in there. Well, I can't say you won't get muted. I'm not the chair. They mute me. Go ahead. Mr. Mays? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there were there were only issues in terms of uh, the mayor's full understanding and support. Now, what I would pose to you as a part of this, and and uh, I know you guys have had a substantial debate. And uh, yeah, look what it didn't turn into allegations of stuff. I'm not. I, yeah, that's what I mean. I'm not trying to go down that direction. Yeah, I, I ain't would, down with that. Let's talk about the details of this. What, what right. I would say to you, what I would say to you is, by your own, by your own discussion, the contract was that the the approval was in August. We did have contracts that were signed prior to our arrival. So, what the question that's you cool. might want. to what the question you okay. might want to ask is how did those two contracts... Now, let's just ask about this one that's been laying there. You know, and um, the, Suzanne the, don't want to say it, but it's in the mayor's office. Let's the, talk the about what is the holdup. Oh, that's the only one we're talking about. Those are the only two. The only, one that, the only two, and the one you're talking about right now has been signed. That's what, that's what Suzanne is uh, providing you. But our whole debate... You saying, has been you saying it has been signed? That that's what she just yes that's what I that's what I said. So what's the hold up on the release of the money if everything's been signed? Have everything nobody been signed? No, nobody has said there was a hold up on the money. We saying it. Ms. Winfrey Carter saying it. No, the hold up you spoke about. I'm saying it. Being the signing. The signing was what everybody's been referencing. That was the argument. So now that's been done recently. Mayor Neely has signed it. I'm going to repeat again. Mayor Neely okay. has signed it. Since you guys have kept saying Mayor Neely hasn't signed it. I'm going okay, to so did that Mayor happen Neely recently? It's it. good news if it happened. Did it just That's happen recently? We can, we can be on one accord about it. That's very good news. Okay, well, if it's been signed, how long do it take to release the money? I'm going to acquiesce to finance or acquiesce to... Uh, <laughs> okay, acquiesce. Let's acquiesce to whoever can say, tell me how long it's been signed and yeah. how long of a gap between the signing and the money. Now, if it was signed recently, then my question is, how long do it take to get the first or any release of the money? Anybody know? I do. This is Suzanne. Um, I believe the contract is in the hands of the contractor. There's a process that we go through once the contract is signed by the mayor. It's called a, a contract review conference. I believe that's been held. That happens between our staff and the director, in this case, Charles Winfrey. And once that's done, then the contract is released to the contractor. And as you know, in terms of the release of funds, that happens it's a reimbursement process so as they expend dollars and submit payment requests they get reimbursed for funds expended on an ongoing basis it is not an automatic release of all funds and that is the case for every every cdbg contract we administer They're and that sounds process. that sounds good but all i'm gonna say is if that stuff had have been in place, I can imagine as long as it's laid there between two or one administration, it doesn't matter to me. That means if I was living my real life, I was struggling and couldn't get reimbursed. Now that everything is in place, okay, I might can do some reimbursements, but they ain't the same as the ones I already done. Ain't no retroactive reimbursement, is it? That's, uh, that I would be improper. I believe the. I'd have to look at the date of the contract. I don't know that offhand. 
Well, that's how I think. Remember, I used to be the finance chair. At one point, I had rank, <laughs> and people <laughs> took that from me for whatever reason. But my point is this. I've enjoyed the conversation. These people don't want to delay, belabor. We done learned something. I'm going to take folk at their word. I talked to Mr. Winfrey, whether I talked to him directly or through um, Ms. Winfrey Carter. My position is that we're not going to try to screw each other around. And I'm not referring to you, Mr. Edwards, and um, Ms. Wilcox. I'm referring to my colleague. Just cut it out. Thank you for your conversation. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. Councilman Gray? Yeah, uh, Madam Chair, I believe you were incorrect about the 40000 a year. I believe it's 412000 a year uh, times 10 years, so that would be $4 point of information. dollars What's the point of information? Do the speaker, yeah. through you to the speaker, Mr. Griggs, do you realize you quoting the exact amount of numbers for the arts millage? We talking about a CDB block grant, two different things. You realize that? I was going by an M Live article. I believe it's four hundred and twelve thousand a year for the McCree Theater plus vehicle comps. <laughs> Mr. Griggs, are you aware that that is the millage money we're talking about? the allocation of block grant dollars, and that's not what we're talking about tonight. Are you aware of that? Are you saying this? So so what you said, is it's only for $40,000 a year? It was only for one, one request, Mr. Gray. Yeah, but you previously said 40000 a year. No, I you didn't say 40000 I said we I said we gave them 40000 not a year, Mr. Gray. So we're not talking about the same thing. Is there anything okay. else from anyone else? Hearing none, that moves us on to the special order for the liquor stores. Mr. Gregg? Yes, yeah, so I think everybody's got the draft in front of them, the draft ordinance uh, about closing stores that sell alcohol at 9 uh, every night. Uh, the only thing that I'm, I'm not real sure about, you know, uh, say an all night drugstore or an all night gas station that's in the Flint city limits, uh, it might be better to just close the operation at nine o'clock during the pandemic. I'm not talking about a permanent ordinance here. I'm talking through the pandemic, which who knows, it may go for another year or so. But uh, that's kind of the what the ordinance is about. Uh, uh, I would trust everybody on council has read this draft ordinance, and they can make comments. Now, I know I worked with Mr. Milhouse and uh, with a lady over in Lansing at the Liquor Commission on this, and that's kind of what we've come up with. So I'm, I'm leaving it up to you all for discussion. Thank you. Is there anyone else? No, I'm sure. Mr. Davis. Thank you for indulging, Madam Chair. That wouldn't be sufficient for me and my ward, period. Actually, the city of Flint. We want to shut them down permanently at 9 o'clock, period. After the pandemic or whatever. We're tired of the nuisance and the crime that's in this community. It's time for it to cease. Because when you go into other residential neighborhoods, such as Grand Blank or Wasso Clio, them stores is closed for the evening. And like on Sunday, some of them do close more often on Sunday, and it's more peaceful, a different environment Sunday evening. Residents is frustrated and they're tired. We want to shut them down at 9 o'clock. Whatever you need to do in a liquor store, and the, the liquor stores need to be held accountable for their violations of lottery and different other things of that nature. We can have that discussion. But not according to the pandemic, they need to close permanently at 9 p.m. That gives them time to go back to the outskirts of wherever they come from safely home because they don't live, it's clear that they don't live in this community the way them stores are looking. And I'm tired of it, and the residents are frustrated all over the city of Flint. 
permanently at 9 p.m., not according to a pandemic. Thank you for indulging me, Madam Chair. Madam uh, President. Madam Chair. Mr. Mr. Winston. Okay. I, I agree with my, my colleague. You know, I'm, I'm pro-business, but I'm even more pro-community. And if we had a critical mass of, of convenience stores operating within the city limits that were partners with the citizens of Flint and this 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 uh, city uh, the city as a whole, then they would be concerned about the activity that goes in on in and around their businesses. But they're not, and so I'm not interested in 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 uh, in shutting them down for uh, just just for a pandemic. I'm I'm interested in shutting them down at a certain hour permanently, as my colleague stated, because it is absolutely and I don't know, outrageous for any business person to think that they can come into this community and do what they will and leave out and take those resources and then just leave us with 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 the uh, uh, folks that create problems once they've gone in and bought their liquor or whatever. And they're not being good community-minded people. And, and And here's a challenge that I would be willing to to issue to my my colleagues, and that is anybody within the other eight wards that's willing to sit down and have a a meeting with all of those businesses, those uh, uh what they call them uh, corner stores or convenience stores or whatever they want to call them, with those uh, businesses to talk to them about what we want and what our community wants and deserves. I'm willing to have that meeting. But still, they ju- they shouldn't just be able to come in and just operate all hours, and uh, they're not policing their their properties and they're not watching what they sell. We really have some problems in this city with with uh, with the uh, single sale of cigarettes, you know, and uh, th- so so we- there's a there's a there's a there's a way that this county this county this council can protect our citizens, and I think one way is to one shut it down at a certain time permanently. Two, let's talk to the businesses, owners, and talk to them and let them know we're not anti-business, but we want them to be a good partner. Thank you, ma'am. Madam President. Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I was next, Madam Chair. Mr. Griggs, you've already spoken once. Uh-huh. And so who hasn't spoken once? I have not. Madam Chair. Mr. May, well, Mr. May, and then Ms. Field. Thank you, Madam President, um, for that acknowledgement. I've listened to the reports about this proposed ordinance. I've seen the media pick up on it. But I want my colleagues, the citizens of Flint, and the media to pick up on what I'm going to say. So far, I've heard from three of my colleagues, Mr. Winfrey, And, Mr. Winfrey, I do agree with you because I'm in partnership with some store owners in my area, and they were in partnership with the previous administration under Police Chief Tim Johnson and Weaver. Remember, we talked cameras. We also put a – I put a proposal in the budget to put more Point of information. What's your point of information? Could Mr. Mays – Define in partnership with? Yeah, I can define it. I know them. For example, Zahara Asap, Zuzu, corner of Pearson Road and DuPont. You might see me in there when it's election time. I might be getting petitions to run for office. Been knowing him for 15 or 20 years. I knew him when he owned the store on the corner of what used to be, I think, 3rd and University Park. University Park bought him out because they didn't want no liquor store over there across from that gas station. So I can define it. Let's go to Pearson Road and um, Martin Luther King corner liquor store. Some Indians got it now. 
and somebody broke in and come through their roof and took money. My partnership with them, I go in there, I cast a check. I didn't call police when somebody was shooting, and I had to run behind the counter. I know the people in my area, Miss Fields. Don't get smart with me. Can you define partnership? You think black folks is crooks. We are in partnerships. I'm the councilman. I'm in partnership with pastors, store owners, know the gas station people, and I'm going to have a serious conversation about that tax base. You ever looked at the taxes they pay? Remember, you was in the group that voted no to put more police. My partnership with them tells me, and I can bring them in to testify that if you close them at nine, patrol their property because people will break through the roof, you better check to see if it'll get them boarded up. You close them at nine and mess with their profit margin, their small businesses, gas stations, stores. Now we got boarded up places. When people hang out in my ward, store owners call the police. They can't get no police. Y'all voted no. The vote was six no, three yes to put police on the street. You just did a survey, a thousand calls. That's 2% of the calls. The other 98% is in the community. Bad people need to go to church. They gon' fuss, cuss, beat folk up in roofs and stores and gas stations, and store owners want police response. You right, Mr. Winfrey, protect and serve. Do you know what happens when a patrol officer come take a complaint? It go to the detective bureau. Y'all had twenty-four million dollars. All of the three that I'm hearing say shut them down voted no to put police on the street. Police can go to stores and break people up. They agreed to put them things in the window, no lottery, and the police could just come without asking them, ain't no police. You should put police on the street to break up stores, answer 911 calls. People shouldn't have to wait in a city outside three, four hours for police. Now everybody want to get creative. Why not shut them down at 7? You shut them down at 9 and somebody get killed on the side street at 8. That ain't the solution. You better watch if you're going to hurt that tax base. You're going to have to watch if you got people coming off of 69 and messing with our revenue base coming off 69 the highway, please. In the pandemic, Mr. Griggs, stores and gas stations were essential businesses. People ain't just buying liquor. They buy bread, milk. Some of them ain't even got cars. Well, yeah, they could shop before nine. Well, let's check on the business's tax base, Mr. Winfrey. Sure, some of them will meet with you. Will it be 100%? I'll meet with you on that, too. But you don't just move hastily because it ain't no police answering calls from store owners, residents. That's where the issue at. Y'all voted no for blight and police. And I got to remind you that I got to get the media to ask me my opinion because it's different from y'all's. Now, I'm just telling you, I've been waiting to chime in on this. I got a voice. Y'all voted no for six or seven cars per ship. Additional. Two years in a row. You know who you are, council people. And then you're going to try to fool the public and say, shut folk down because people are lottering and won't clean up the blight at their stuff. 
Them the two issues y'all voted six to three. Winfrey Carter, Mays, and Galloway voted to do the right thing. We didn't have to get creative yet. All we want is police to break up stuff at stores, to arrest crooks, bad people. We need patrol and detective. And then you can have a safe city. You close a store at nine. Why don't you close the roofs? I got beat up there. Close it at nine. I'm going to be an advocate for common sense. I want a common sense approach first. And y'all control the purse strings. Y'all done let this administration squander $24 million. Might not could put police on the street now listening to Eric Scassoni, who ain't an appointee. But you talking about ethics, Miss Finance Chair. Let's talk about the charter, the law, the big bulk of it. Appointees all in our banking accounts squandering $24 million. We can't put police on the street. Now we got to resort to close them down at nine. Talk and shut them down. I'm a Democrat. I'm for the working man. I'm for small business. Let's look at this. Let's keep this on the next council agenda for discussion. And I so move. There's a motion to keep this on the agenda for the next council meeting if you support for that. Madam President. Mr. Winfrey. I support that motion. Is there any support? Is there any discussion? Yeah, yes, Madam ma'am. President. Councilwoman Fields. Thank you. Um, I want to talk about the actual resolution, the draft that was presented to us. First of all, the actual resolution does not mention, specify only during the pandemic. Point of order. It's the res- Point of order. Point of order. There's a motion to postpone this to the next council meeting, Ms. Fields. No, point of order. What's the what point of order? What's, what's your point of order? My motion was to move at the next council meeting. I yes. didn't necessarily use the word postpone, but yes. if I need to withdraw it to give people time to talk, I'll withdraw it. Well you, well, you made a motion to move it to the next council meeting. So the discussion that should be happening now is whether or not you're supporting moving it to council meeting on Monday. Madam Chair, let me understand this. So you're saying that what I'm trying to discuss is not relevant to that motion? Now, I'm I'm not being germane? I'm saying the motion on the floor is to move this to the next council meeting. Usually the discussion is around whether you are going to support moving it or not. If you want to discuss it more, you can ask your colleague to withdraw his motion, and then you can discuss and talk about what you think it's saying because that's different from where we are now. Well, it's really interesting to me, your your fine hair uh observation of what is or isn't relevant at this moment. I will talk about the postponement. I don't think it should be postponed. I don't mind continuing the discussion, but can you clarify for me whether this is a motion to postpone or to continue it? I'm not clear on what this motion is. The motion that was made by Councilman Mays is to forward this on to the council meeting on Monday. So, okay. that, so that, you're that effectively means... trying to stop my discussion I'm of not. the motion while I'm everyone not. else has had an opportunity to weigh in. You are in violation of council rule that says if you don't cease talking, you shall be removed. The point of order is I'm not coming to stop you from anything. There is a motion on the floor. You know as well as anything. It's almost like I move for the question. And so if you would like your colleague to remove his motion, he said he would, Ms. Fields, let's not go on and on and on about this. Do you want him to remove his motion? 
can do as he wishes. Madam President. Councilman Mays. I move to withdraw the motion. There's a motion to withdraw his motion. Is there support for that? Madam Madam President. Mr. Winfrey. I support the motion to withdraw. It's been moved and properly supported. Is there any discussion to withdraw the motion? If not, roll call, please, on withdrawing the motion. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Ms. Fields? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Vote is seven yes, zero no. The vote is seven yes, zero no. Ms. Fields, you have the floor. Thank you. I have a couple of things that I think are very pertinent before we have move on and have additional discussion at another meeting. Number one, it is not clear in the draft ordinance that has been presented to us for discussion. Uh, it does not say only during the pandemic. You know, it's across the board as an ordinance that would be ongoing in effect uh, always until it was repealed. So uh, that is muddying the waters here. Also, I'm not clear on the ability, and I would like to ask an attorney, and I believe Mr. Milhouse wrote this, but if he's not available, I would ask uh, Attorney Wheeler. I believe we can limit the hours of liquor sales but I'm not sure if we could limit the hours that a business may stay open. For example, a gas station. Can can we legally tell a gas station what hours they may or may not be open, or can we only limit the hours they may sell alcohol? Yeah, I think this had more to do with the alcohol, but uh, this particular ordinance, or, and like I said, this is a draft, and so... So this was not like this was just so you know it wasn't submitted to the entire council it was submitted to councilman griggs because attorney millhouse is working with councilman griggs so this was just the initial draft um we don't even have an assigned chapter to it yet okay so i just want you to know like I said we were just getting started on this however i did send it to council staff um just in fairness to everyone since it's being discussed tonight to make sure that it's disseminated to everyone to take a look at. But like I said, this is in its infancy, um, although we are working quickly on it. Um, so like I said, I need to, to double check that. That just has to do really with related to the liquor sales because that was the point of it. But I believe this one was mirrored off of two. Um, one was off of the city of Gross Point Farm. And the other was uh, some information found from Wisconsin's um, um, alcohol, beverage, and tobacco law retailer. So we, we looked at a couple of different areas, but the city of Gross Point um, Farms was one that we looked at specifically. So we'll, I'll get an answer on that to see if we can also encompass gas stations and if it also have gas stations in the Gross Point Farms one. Okay, thank you. Well, I think we we need clarification on whether it's even legal to pass a, an ordinance, this ordinance as written, okay, and whether, in fact, this is the intent. You know, is the intent to close these stores and these, uh, you know, every, in the ordinance it talks about liquor stores, convenience stores, gas stations, et cetera, but is it the intent to close their, all of their business? or only to limit their alcohol sales. And also, I want to say, in terms of how these stores operate, now, it is state law that uh, no one is allowed to have an open intoxicant outside the store. And part of the problem, and I think the complaint that the neighbors in various parts of the city have is that these liquor stores are doing nothing to prevent people from just 
basically they're actually bringing chairs and couches and they're having making little living rooms out of the parking lots of some of these places and they're they have open liquor that they're drinking now it is up to the city police to police that but i don't know our capacity to police that across the city but it is our responsibility to, to make sure that these state laws are followed but in terms of working with these stores i think there's certainly more that they could do to not allow people to bring couches and chairs and set up uh you know many parties outside the store drinking and partying and that's where i think the neighbors are objecting and i think that's where these altercations are happening it's not a quick in and out of the store it's because they're loitering in the parking lots creating problems so I, if we could limit the sale of liquor i would certainly support that but i think we need to be a little clearer on the parameters of what we do or do not have in this ordinance um before we try to move something like this for first reading that's all thank you thank you Madam and, Chair. and i'm asking that one second oh mr is that you mr winfrey was that mr winfrey it's councilman that? davis okay councilman Davis. well councilman davis you've spoken once am i correct yes okay yes i haven't i, I haven't i just want to say one thing um i'm sure we are all very passionate about this it is 1105 we know for a fact that this was only a discussion that we were not going to take action tonight i am asking my colleagues to allow us to move this to the next council meeting and to move the master resolution and to approve or separate anything that you don't agree with to the next council meeting, which is on Monday, five days away. And so in the interest of time, can we, can we all agree to do that? It's 1105. I think that we can make a decision on whether we're going to deal with these resolutions tonight or at Monday's council meeting in like 10 minutes. There are many that need to get off that have that are staying out of courtesy. And so Madam Chair, any um, further discussion? Mr. Griggs? Yeah, I, I just won't take me 15 seconds. Uh, you know, I don't need any attacks. But, you know, all other eight council people could have easily done the same thing. I just threw it out there for discussion. And if you, if you want to shut them down, all you got to do is sign the draft ordinance and be done. So stop attacking me. Thank you. Mr. Briggs, I, I want to thank you on behalf of, um, of just m m me taking the initiative. This was a beginning starting point for the conversation, and so that's why we have committees, but we don't. And so thank you for what you've done, and I think that you've done a great job in starting the conversation. And, and I will read it over over the weekend. And so if there's nothing further, um, I, I move that this will be added to the um, council meeting on Monday and then that we um, move on. So that brings us to licenses. Madam President. Madam point of order. Point What's of order. Point of order, Mr. Davis? What was my place in my special order, ma'am? Oh, didn't you? I thought you already spoke. No, I only had one time. I had a special order just like Griggs did. Well, actually, you you. But I'm gonna move it over to Monday. I could do that, but I want to say Mays, this, Mr. Mays. I mean, Councilman Davis. I want Davis. you to calm down. One second. Originally, you said that your special order would be included in his. And I didn't say and, nothing. I, okay, you 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 did. You you spoke and said this is not gonna work for my ward. We want. Start meeting. Share better. The recording has started. Resolution for 
and cooling the air. Muted. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? And and yeah, I would the move the map. I would move the master resolutions for for approval, including the add-on. There's a master Madam resolution, um, approval of the master resolution, Mr. Griggs. Yeah, I second that. It's been moved and properly seconded. Davina and Janelle, what is the add-on resolution that Councilman Mays is speaking of? Well, we put that under ordinances. It's an emergency ordinance. Oh, okay. Oh, then I don't have to do that. I would, um, if I may, I'll amend the motion just to approve the master resolution. There's an amended motion to approve the master resolution. Is there a second to that? Madam Chair. Mr. Griggs. I'll second that. Is the move improperly seconded? Is there any separation? Madam Chair, this is Janelle. Janelle, I mean, Ms. Janelle, um, you wanted us to. Um, separate which or which one? The first one. Okay, so we'll separate that one. The um the setting the public hearing. Okay. Is there any other separation? Any other separation? Madam just, President. Like, go ahead. Please. Go ahead and you got some separations. I'll wait. Go ahead. I just have one separation. I'd like to separate two zero zero four two five. What is it? Define it. Um, the Southern Flint water case. Okay. And so, cause, yeah, and so is there any further? Any other separations you got? Yes. No, I don't. Mm -mm. Okay. Well, it's a couple of separations that I had on there. How many resolutions is Fifteen. Okay, and um, can you go over what, to read what they is? I don't have Councilman my agenda. Mays, Councilman Mays, I can't. I won't do that. I'm sorry. That's okay. I mean, but will you hesitate till I pull this agenda up on my phone? And so I can't mute when I'm pulling it up. I can work through the agenda, but I can't pull it up when I'm muting and unmuting and getting the floor. So I'm going to ask for your indulgence. I'm going to pull up the city council agenda, and I'll tell you exactly what I'm going to separate. The public need to know what we both known anyway, Madam Chair, but I'll do that as well. Councilman Mays, the, the agenda was put on the um, website. Okay, well, the for public might be. Meeting. It might be. I'm just asking you to indulge me while I my slow phone pull up the agenda so I can take care of the people's business. Will you Absolutely. indulge me? It's 1111. It is. You want me to make a motion to recess until 530 tomorrow or you pull this up? If I can make the motion to recess if that's keep being a problem. That's Councilman Mays. I didn't make no motion. I say, do you want me to? Councilman Mays. I just want to move on. We are all okay, ready. and I just want to pull up my agenda right quick. I got it up. It's it's up. Let me now get the resolutions, please. I mean, you got to indulge us somewhat. The public hearing resolution resolving um, the vision. Okay, I want to separate. Um, okay, that's the one been separated on the strategic plan. Let me do this in discussion. Them change order number twos for them line cutting um, services. Who is on the line that can deal with that? Anybody know if them change orders and that extra money? Um, one of them is say amount not to exceed fifty six thousand. I think both of them said that. Clyde, anybody on the line? What is we doing all them change orders for extra money for for the line cutting? Point of order. Point of order. Point of order. Madam Chair, Mr. Mays is trying to engage in discussion or dialogue in separations. We don't normally do that. You Absolutely. just either separate them or you don't. That's not true, Councilwoman Fields. 
This is the time where you can have discussion or separation. This session because is no longer being to... recorded. So we have to just cease talking, you guys. The recording has started. Thank you. Ms. Fields, this is the time where if you want to have dialogue because you're not going to separate, this is the time for it. If you're going to separate, I, then you separate and you don't talk about the separation. I don't believe that's correct. You don't that's the way we try to talk to the staff. You just separate or not separate and then under the motion, then you have discussion. Ms. Fields, that's what we've been doing it this way the whole time that we've been on council. Well, I disagree, but you're going to do whatever you're going to do. I'm not. I'm doing what we have consistently been doing. And so, Mr. Mays, you you wanted the staff to come on, and Janelle... On that particular one, yeah. I see what I'm going to separate now, but on that particular one, I wasn't planning on separating it, but I wanted to hear some, you know. Because we're in five minutes. Janelle and Javina are timing. Okay. Go ahead. Well, in them five minutes, I'm going to do a couple of separations. Now, while we waiting on the staff, if anybody can answer why is them, what's happening with them contracts for the grass cut, and that's the right of way. Mr. Mays? That cried. Go ahead, Clyde. Yes. Yeah, these are these are um, additional funds, as far as I understand. These are additional funds to complete the, the grass cutting aspects of this year. These were funds that um, have been requested uh, by that department uh, to be able to continue the mowing and complete the mowing. Yeah, if they if they gonna do a good job, just like up there between on Home Street between Oxley and um and 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 Clio Road, where them tires ain't been moved yet, then I'm all for it. But I'm just saying, when they put them bids in, somebody missed bid, and the grass growing too fast. When it come to change orders and budget amendments, you know we supposed to watch them hundred thousands turn into millions. And last I knew, it was a four to six million projected, um, you know, fund balance, way under the 15 percent. But at the same time, I'm steady seeing budget amendments. Ms. Galloway, I want to separate the one that deal with the lease for Brennan Center, and I want to separate the one that deal with the water meters. You need the numbers for them. The Brennan Center one. Um, park thing is two zero zero four one six, and the one dealing with the water meters is uh two zero zero four one four. Mr. Edwards, if you want to respond, fine. If you want to remain silent, fine. Well, well, I, <laughs> what, what exactly would you like to know? I mean, in terms of. Which no, I'm just uh, wondering if you're watching it because uh, if they're doing a good job and really need the extension or if they're underbid, then, you know, I want to look at it. And then finally, Ms. Galloway, I'm going to separate 200418 and 200421. Um, that that's that awesome. Did I, let's say, four, did I say 418 and 421? You did. And you separated the 425. Is that right? That is right. Okay. I'm good. That makes this thank master you. resolution. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. Oh, yeah, no that problem. Makes the, that makes the master resolution 200408. 200409, 200410, 200411, 200412, 200413, 200414, and 200429. Is that what you have, Davina and Janelle? 
Yes, ma'am. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call on the master resolution. Mr. Davis? Yes. Ms. Fields? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Vote is seven yes, zero no. Vote is seven yes, zero no to approve the master resolution. That brings us to the first separation, which is 200426. I separated that because the staff says the date needs to change. What does the date need to read, staff? If you could just put blanks in it or just, just amend it, and we'll put blanks in it because we have to figure out when we can get it published. So can someone make it? So do we need to do an amendment to make it a 200426.1? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can I have a motion for that? Madam President. Councilman Winfrey. I move that we... Make two zero zero four twenty six or four uh two zero zero four two six point one. Based on the recommendation and based on the recommendation of, of our of our support staff. Thank you. Is there a support for that motion? Is there support I support for that motion. motion. Ms. Fields has supported that motion. Is there any further discussion on that changing? Yeah, Madam President. Councilman May. Yeah, although I thought I got wrongly put out of the last meeting, I continue to listen. And this reminds me of a public hearing where a motion was made to approve some council recommendations before we had public input. Now, through you to um, Janelle, Ms. Johnson, you want these to be blanks because of what? I'm wondering if we should drop it and wait till it get ready to really be said and had. Um, you know, I know certain deadlines, but you want this to be blank. What do you anticipate going to go in them blanks time-wise? I'm trying to see should it drop and start over. Go ahead. I'm listening. Well, this is just to set a public hearing, and you can't, that didn't go on the last agenda, so we need to just put blanks in there so that you could say, yes, we're going to set a public hearing, and we will put the dates of the hearing in after we've published the notice in the Flint Journal. See, I'd rather vote on setting a public hearing specifically. I'm trying to say, see, if we vote on setting a public hearing without voting on setting the dates, I don't I don't know about that. Have we done that before? Well, I mean, is that a good practice? Yes, sir. We have them do it on Oprah's and all of the other um, resolutions that ask for a public hearing because the journal doesn't publish every day now, and we're not always sure when we can get it in and have enough time for the public to know before that public hearing. So if we put blanks in there, then so, we can, you know, we have a little leeway. So... I would feel more comfortable if we said do all things necessary and put them blanks. But if we adopt a resolution re resolving a blank, I, I'm going to listen, but I don't know how I'm going to vote on this one today. I mean, okay. I'm one of them do all things necessary type of guys, and I'm one of them dot the I's and cross the T's. But I don't want to really vote on it. And it's adopting a resolution or an amendment to do the blanks. If you put the uh, do all things necessary, including that timing, I'm okay with that. That's all I'm going to say. Is there any further discussion? Yes, Madam Chair. Council on the field. I. I I want to support the motion as it is because uh, I don't want to go back. We already can't get through all the work that we need to be doing in any reasonable amount of time, so there's no reason to do all this work over again. This is a 
technique we've used often in order to just meet the tech technicality of being able to publish notice in time to be able to put the appropriate dates in a publication. So I say we just vote for the point one as suggested. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Ms. Fields? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? No. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Mr. Mays? I'm going to abstain. I'm not comfortable with it. Mr. Davis? Yes. Vote is five yes, one no, one abstain. Vote is five yes, one no, one abstention. The, um, Madam Chair? The amendment passes. Councilwoman Fields? I'd like to move for approval 200426.1. There's a motion to approve 200426.1. Is there support for that motion? Is there support for that motion? Madam uh, President. Yeah. Council Winfrey? I support the motion. It's been moved and properly supported. Is there any discussion? Madam President. Council May. Yeah, I'm going to have to vote no. I had kind of suggested a way I thought to do it. And so now that it's going through this way, I'll be voting no. I won't abstain. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call on approval. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Mr. Mays? No. Mr. Davis? Yes. Ms. Fields? Yes. Vote is six yes, one no. That brings us to 200414. Point of order. Point of order. Point of order. Call the vote. Repeat what she said for the record. The vote was. I'm sorry. Was I on mute? So the vote was five yes, one no, one abstention. So it passed. No. Go ahead. The vote was six yes, one no. Six yes, one no. Thank you. I guess I was on mute. I'm sorry, you guys. Six yes, one no, it passes. That brings us to 200414, Councilman May's separation of the water meter. Yeah. Um, to you to Mr. Edwards. Point of order. Um, Councilman Mays, there has to be a motion on the floor before you can discuss it. I didn't know that because uh, that's why we separated. We don't, well... Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna move to postpone it then. Because I ain't gonna make them to, before I get a, my information. There's a motion to postpone two zero zero four one four. Is there support for that motion? Is there support for that motion? Is there support for that motion? That motion dies for a lack of support. Is there a motion for two zero zero four one four? Madam Chair. Councilman Griggs. So moved. There's some there's a motion to approve two zero zero four one four. Is there a is there support for that motion? Is there support for that motion? Is, is there support for that motion? That motion dies for a lack. So, Davina, what happens when there's no motion to postpone and there's mo no motion to approve? Does it just drop? 
Madam President. Wait, wait a minute, Councilman Mays. Davina? Davina is is not here at the moment, and okay. I'm not really sure what happened. Madam uh, President. This is Davina. Davina, I hear Davina. One second, Councilman Mays. I will get you, Davina. Um, I think we've had this happen recently, and I think, um, but I will defer to the attorney as well, but I think um, it died kind of, and you had to bring it back. Okay. It's in the last point of the, order. What's your point of order, Councilman May? Those are not the only two motions can be made. I don't know why we're fishing down that stream when a live setting councilman trying to get the um, floor up because them ain't the only two motions. My point of order is that you acting like those are the only two motions and won't give the floor where we can proceed with the business. I'm not, Councilman Mays. I was asking the um, record keepers, but you can go ahead and tell me what you'd like to do, Councilman Mays. Well, thank you. I was voted to be a sitting council person. You, I would, you know, really, we, we've grown. And I ain't trying to be funny, but before we go to all of them opinions, let's just continue to conduct the meeting. It was a motion made to, post, to um, postpone, I think, a motion made to approve. And you got motions to deny. You got motions to table. So I'm going to move the table until after the last separation. Wait a minute. So, wait a minute. Attorney Wheeler, I want to ask a question. Councilman Mays is making a motion, and so, but if, the, if it actually is dead, his motion is mute. And so, Councilman Mays, where are you seeing in the council rule that allows you to do what you're saying? Let me ask you this question. The motion that I first made was what? To postpone it. Until when? Regardless, it it died. The next no, meeting. it makes a difference. You can postpone it to the next meeting. You can postpone to after the last separation. Those are different motions. This Council motion is to postpone to the after the last separation. You know what? There's a motion to table it until after the last um the the last item. Is there support for that motion? Is there support for that motion? Madam President. Mr. Winfrey. Yeah, I'll support that motion. Is been moved and properly supported. There is no discussion on a set time. Roll call. Please. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Ms. Field? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Vote is seven yes, zero no. Vote is seven yes, zero no. That brings us to the next separation, 200416. Councilman May. Okay, is that the, that's one dealing with what? What is the title? The you said the number. Seven your pardon? Seven year use agreement, City of Flint, Brennan Park, and Food Bank of Eastern Michigan. Okay, to you, I would move the um, to approve that. There's a motion to approve two zero zero four one six. Is there support for that motion? Madam President, I'm here. Mr. Mr. Winfrey, I support the motion. It's been moved and properly supported. Is there any discussion? Yeah, yes, Madam, Madam Chair. Councilman I'll Mays and Ms. Fields. I'm gonna yield to her first. Ms. Fields, go ahead. I just want to say, I don't know what the point of separating it was, which lengthens the meeting. It's now 1130 at night. I don't think people can think clearly. I think this meeting has gone on too long because we've allowed too much dialogue that wasn't germane earlier in the meeting. Uh, and unfortunately, I'm going to leave the meeting at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. So, 
so there's a motion, Mr. Mays. You have the floor. Yeah, through you, uh, Madam President, through you, Madam President, to Mr. Edwards. Mr. Edwards, I read this as an extension of an already existing agreement. Would that be a fair statement? I believe that's correct, but I would acquiesce to um, the attorney, uh, to Angela. She. But my next question is um, my next question is going to be the physical aspect of the park of the park that's being extended. And it said something about parking. Is it a parking, um, you know, blacktop type thing there? I'm kind of familiar yeah. with it, but what is being extended? Because you couldn't sell the park unless you got a vote of the people. So you saying this agreement is? Um, just the use of it, and it includes um, a parking lot that's been blacktopped as, that's part of the park, is that what's being said? Yeah, I, from, from my, and, and, and I, like I said, Angela can jump in, but I've been there before, and yes, that's, the parking lot is back, backs up to the grass line of Brennan, so I guess the parking lot was built on Gren, Brennan's property. Uh, what was Brennan's property? So that that yeah, would be I, my understanding of it. Yeah, that's what it seemed like when I read it. And I ain't got no objections to standing in the way, but I still want to speak about that on record to try to make sure I'm getting a clear understanding of what's being asked here. Is that <laughs> so? You said, Angela, but if you think you know, I'm you know about ready to vote, but. I just want to clear something up in my mind on the record because I remember back in the day, even before the other administration, when they was talking about this and they were negotiating that park land. And this is an extension. And um, this is how many years? Seven years. That sounds a little for me. Um, yeah, it, it is for seven years. Um, and this is a contract that, ex- that extends the previous contract that was that began in August of 2012, and so it recently expired, um, but it hasn't been expired for that long. Uh, Food Bank has been a good partner of the city, and um, like I said, all they, they they use the parking lot, but they also do upgrades to the to the park. So they, this is a great benefit for the city and a great partnership. Yeah, I thought that that um, upkeep of the park had something to do with it. But, Angela, is that parking lot black top as part of the park property that we both know? Do you know? No, I do not. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? Yeah, Ms. Galloway, do you know? I, Councilman Mays, um, I thought it was just an extension. I, I thought that that was that because that's where the parking is, okay. and so that's what I assumed. If there's no further discussion, roll call, please. Ms. Galloway. Yes. Mr. Griggs. Yes. Mr. Mays. Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes, yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Vote is six yes, zero no. The vote is six yes, zero no. That brings us to 200418, the final project plan, authorized project representative the water treatment distribution plan. Madam President. The reason I separated that through you, Madam President, to Mr. Edwards. Mr. Edwards, it identifies Rob Benzik on there as, as a vacant position. Is he gone? He is indeed, sir, as of September 21st. Okay, so all those people named in that document, if he was still here, would that still be necessary to have that yeah, many? Yeah, that, that, 
that that is correct. Yes, it should have been that way in the first place. Uh, but yeah, you, you you have you have too many projects of such a high value that it rests only with a single signer, and so this changes that. You have multiple signers. Any one of these people are capable uh, and would be authorized. Of course, we would keep it to the highest levels of leadership to do it, but I'm just saying to you, this this provided some room. It should never, uh, just like a checking account or anything else, you should never have only one person who's the primary authorized signer because anything can happen. Well, you got that in the finance department. You got um, Amanda as the deputy, I mean, as the treasurer, and you got her as the chief financial officer, and I'm not sure what Eric Scorsoni do. So it should never, you're right, it should never happen, not in the organizational structure you're referring to. Are you telling me that Rob Benzik had been a single sign? Are you telling me Rob Benzik had been a single sign, and now it's going to be all of these different people who can sign and he was the pri- he was the primary authorized signer, and as far as I can tell from records, uh, that yes, he was the one authorizing uh, disbursements and 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 uh, project reimbursements and all that stuff. Yes, he was the one. So are you? Am I, am I understanding now that? Am I understanding now that any one of these people can do that? It does doesn't take these multiple people. Any one of the people can do that. Is that's that what you're correct. telling me yes. now? Yes, that's correct. You're absolutely 100% correct. Now, who is the highest level person in this bunch? Is it you or the mayor? It would be the it would be the mayor, but a much of the much of the operational activity and authorization has uh, fallen with me. So when you say at the highest levels, you would probably be signing most of this stuff, but if somebody else in here, if you ain't available, you saying that they can sign, and that's what y'all asking us to approve? Yes. And the law gives y'all the option to have one or multiple ones. I, I would ask. It, it is a contractual agreement, and you are authorizing, I guess, when you say the law. Uh, in this case, you are the law, and so you're authorizing these designated people legally to be authorized to sign contracts to authorize payments. Now, do I want to do that because I'll be giving up my authority to know when these contracts are being signed? You, this is how it's all, I mean, this is the actual functional way uh, administration is responsible for signing the contract. That's all the, that's, that is the way it's built. If you, you guys are approving uh, the, the, the modality to move to, con, to contractual agreements but the contract is always signed by uh, the administration. That's right, but then we approve contracts as well. These contracts is for what specific activity that you said never should have been one person? What is the activity for the record? These are all the water projects, the the um, secondary water stores, the Dort Reservoir, the uh, chemical feed building, the Cedar Reservoir. Cedar pumping station, Dork pumping station. These are all those projects now, that you guys already Why approved. would you? Why? Yeah, we did approve them, but why wouldn't we want to look at the specific contracts? The contracts are already signed. All, all of these. Well, I, I, I take that back. I'm sorry. I'm staying corrected. I'm sorry about that. Uh, most of these contracts have already been uh, implemented, signed, and implemented. There are some still pending, um, but you already. The, the, the contracts themselves uh, for the other projects will be coming before you. For instance, the Cedar, the Cedar pumping station and, and Cedar Reservoir have not gone out for bid and for engineering at this point. So those I'm trying to be courteous to 
I'm trying to be courteous to my colleagues as well as to the general public. But like I say, I'm going to keep up in no committee meetings, and they want me to vote on these major things with no committee meetings. I'll listen to my colleagues, but at this point, Mr. Edwards, unless they indulge me in more conversation, I might abstain. I, I mean, I ain't tripping about it, but I mean... You got to do committee work and get questions answered. And before people start saying, well, it's late, we got to rush through this. Haste make waste. And you're dealing with multi millions of dollars, if you understand me. I need to know the mechanics of governmental operation. We got governmental operation committee, we got finance, and this council ain't been functioning. Um, anything else you want to tell me? No, this is just, uh, as I said, this is just to give authorization for us to continue what we've already been doing, but to have appropriate people in place to sign off. So have we moved on Rob Benzik's replacement? He had some licenses and stuff that you have to really have in there, don't you? Uh, Council that, that Major is time has expired. Point of order. And I have been subtracting the time that you've been speaking to Mr. Edwards. So you can wrap up your last question. I don't want no favors under them cockamamie rules. I don't, I'm going to start you. keeping my own time. I would just wrap mm -hmm. up by saying I hope that the time was split up between me and Mr. Edwards. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Hearing a roll call on the approval of 200421. There's no motion on the table, Madam Chair. There. Uh, that's that's 40. That's uh, 418. 418 is what we were discussing. 418. Yes. There's no there's no motion on the floor. No. How did how did that happen? Okay. So point of order. what's your point of order, Councilman Mays? It was a motion on the floor. Of course there was a motion on the floor. But that's why I had a five minute limit. If it wasn't no motion then you know, I yeah. thought I made the motion and I um, who seconded her and Herb seconded. Mr. Winfrey, did you second it? I sure did. Thank you. And so I'm sorry, was that was two zero that was two zero zero four one six. There was never a motion made on two zero zero four one eight. We did, Janelle, that's what I'm saying. Mr Mr. Mays did, which was unusual. He made it, and then Mr. Winfrey seconded, and then we started discussion, which is why I started recording. And so if you would like to hear them say it again. Mr. Mays, can you, I mean, we're not going to start. I would so on. move. I would so move. And then is there a second for that? Madam, Madam President. Mr. Vinci. I support the motion. Can move and properly support it. So is there anyone else that would like to speak on that? Hearing none, roll call on the approval. Mr. Griggs. Yes. Mr. Mays? Yeah, I would abstain because under these rules, can't discuss it, can't vet it properly, no committee meetings, I abstain for those reasons. Mr. Davis? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Vote is five yes, one abstention. Then five yes, one abstention, the motion carries. That brings us to four two zero zero four two one authorization water project pollution plan. Madam Chair, I would move to approve that. There's a motion to approve. Is there support for that motion? Madam President. Councilman Wimpy. I support the motion. It's been moved and properly supported. Is there any discussion? Madam President. Councilman Mays. To you to Mr. Edwards. Mr. Edwards, is this a similar type of thing? Yes, sir. Uh, just for the uh, for the water pollution control. 
uh, it's six projects there that uh, need to be that would be you can take this any way you want, but when I give up authorization to certain folks to run the city, I don't like them. Even though I, I understand that I'm a politician and you got somebody with higher authority than you, namely Mr. Neely, signing off, and I ain't comfortable with all them sign-offs on the McCree Theater and other sign-offs and the picking up a blight in the first ward and politics and all of that. So I'll probably abstain again because I'm reluctant when folks don't come. And when they do come, they want to give me an update on the city that I already know very well. I don't call people for updates and tell me not to speak in my special order and colleagues join in. I call them up for governmental operations. I'm the still film the still guy still talking about the the the, the Eric Scorsoni contract. I'm still that same guy that believed that charter appointees should not be department heads driving trucks. That's a department head. If you over a department that requires council approval. Appointees don't drive city vehicles. I have not seen that in years. So I'm that guy, and I ain't going to give up authorization. I'm going to abstain, and I ain't going to use my whole five minutes talking about it. But believe me, I'm used to folks respectfully disagreeing with me. I ain't used to folks fighting me physically and beating me up. I'm old. I ain't the guy I used to be. I'm wiser. And I ain't going to authorize folks who, in my opinion, cheats in elections and win by just a little bit and don't want to talk about things. Y'all need to get up here in the middle of the emergency because I'm not going to do my legislative job, not me, and give up all authority. So you'll probably get this authorization. I don't quite know all about it. We ain't got committee meetings. That ain't your fault. But y'all got a lot to do with folk you work for who think they can politic a seasoned politician in governmental operations. You might can get them other ones. And I'm not that much. You don't take it personally. It's charter. It's business. But y'all administration is politicking the heck out of some of my colleagues. Thank you so much. Is there any further discussion? Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call on the approval. Mr. Mays? I abstain because I haven't properly vetted it. We don't have committee meetings, and these cockamamie five-minute rules don't do it for me. i got to vote on major policy and money, so I abstain for those reasons. Mr. Davis? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Vote is five yes, one abstention. The vote is five yes, one abstention. That leads us to the last separation, which is 200425. Um, that was my separation. It was for settlement Flint water case. Attorney Wheeler? Yeah, um, I, I think. Uh, can we postpone I'm, that to the? Go ahead. I would ask that that be dropped, and we'll just bring it back later. Okay. So, do we have to vote to drop it, or can we drop it, Janelle? Can I should vote. Okay. So vote can, can I have a motion to drop? Madam President. Councilman Winfrey. I move that we drop two zero zero four two five till such time that is appropriate for us to uh, dispense with it. There's a motion to drop. Is there support for that? Is there support for that? Madam um, President, Councilwoman Winfrey, I support that motion. There's a motion to drop. It's been properly. Motioned and supported. Is there any discussion on a drop? 
Yeah, Madam President. Yeah, this is the water crisis settlement motion to drop. And yes. if it is, I want to make it clear that I didn't go in no executive closed session on this matter. And it sounds like the same matter where because I, for certain reasons I wasn't really welcomed in the um, executive session. So I'm going to abstain because I don't know any details about it. It ain't been talked about publicly. But I have a question to you, to Miss Wheeler. What is the definition of this water crisis thing that you want to drop? What do you mean? What do you mean? What is it? What do it say on the paper? I said, I, maybe I can pull it up and read it. I'd have to cut my phone mm-hmm. back around. You might have no, it I just in want front to you're, asking. you're asking for the title of the resolution? Yeah, what is it? What if they ask them to drop? Settlement water cases. It has the case number. Settlement water cases. And the case number is a what? A federal or state court case? It's a, it's a federal case, Captain, for all the water litigation. You got some state court claims, too, don't you, Ann? There are many, many cases throughout the state of Michigan water. But this specific one is a federal court case. The caption for the Flint water cases as the court has done it, it, it has they're under this, this caption. Great, thank you. Thank uh, you one more me. question if I may. One more question if I may. Ms. Willow, we filed an intent to sue letter way back. I don't know if you was the city attorney. You familiar with that? Yes. Have the time frames on that intent to sue letter um, bypassed us and we didn't file anything? Or is they still alive? Do you know? Um, I, I don't want to misspeak, but I, I so, so I'm not going to be listening to this, but um, I didn't understand what you said. I said, I don't want to speak out of turn. I don't have it in front of me, but it's likely that most of them have ran. It's likely what? That most of the countries have ran, that, they're, that they have expired. Can you find out a definite answer and whether you let me know? Privately or publicly, I want to know the answer to that question. Yes. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? I haven't tried tried to get the city to move on that for years. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call on the drop. Thank you for calling the City of Flint. Please be assured that your call will be answered as quickly as possible. Hello? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. I'm sorry. I was muted. Mr. Davis? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yeah, I abstain. I did not attend the closed session on the discussion about a water settlement. I'm not privileged to information regarding it, and so I abstain for those reasons. That's five yes and one abstention. I think five yes and one abstention. That most that um, resolution is dropped. That brings us to the tabled resolution, which was the setting of the public hearing that was on the table two zero zero four two six point one. Is that correct, Mr. Dale? Yes. Yeah. 
public hearing passed, didn't it? Which one? So which one? Which one is tabled? Yes, it passed. You tabled. Uh, oh, the one you tabled two zero zero four one four. Yes. Okay. So is there a motion to pick it up off the table? Madam President, I would so move to pick that up off the table. There's a motion to pick it up off the table. Is there a second? Is there a second? Madam Mr. Madam President. Mr. Davis has seconded. So what is the motion now? Madam President, the, <laughs> if I may, the first motion included that we would table it until after the last. So I have no problem moving to pick it up off the table, but I think this we had already last. agreed to do that. That is the last. We are asking. So what, is your, what are you saying, Councilman Mayor? No, I'm just saying I'm ready to vote because I thought we had agreed to do it anyway. So is there oh, a is motion to pick it up to, off the table? Yes, there's a there's a motion to pick it up off the table, and it's been properly seconded by Mr. Davis. And so, is there any discussion on picking it up off of the table? Hearing none, roll call on picking it up off the table, please. Ms. Winfrey Carter. Yes. Mr. Winfrey. Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Gregg? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Vote is six yes, zero no. Vote is six yes, zero no. What is the motion for the, from this body? Madam President, can you cite what we just took off the table? We just took off the table. Resolution 200414, Metron Farnier LLC, Residential and Commercial Water Meters. Yeah, Madam President, um, for the purpose of discussion, I'll move it for approval. There's a motion to approve. Is there support for that motion? Madam President. Mr. Winfrey. I support the motion. It's been moved and properly supported. Is there any discussion? Yeah, Madam President, through you to Mr. Ed, Mr. Edwards, what are we voting on here um, as it relates to these residential and commercial um, water meters? Uh, this is the vendor, Metron Farner. They're the vendor for the commercial. It's really commercial um, water meters because uh, we've been using Badger primarily for the residential one. So these are uh, the commercial meters, um, and it's just about, you know, we're in that phase as we've been restoring and taking care of residential meters. We're also moving into the phase of getting commercial meters um, installed as well. So this is to, to provide that supply of the commercial meters to be able to get that part of the job done. So why do the resolution mention residential? Because it kind of threw me off. It was a different company. I'm getting calls from residents telling me the name of that company. It didn't match up in my mind. So why would this resolution say residential and commercial? Why wouldn't it just say commercial? Because in a few, because yes, I mean you're correct. Your observation is correct. Because in a few circumstances, those were used as. Um, <laughs> residential meters as well they both to, to, to the, the technology of it is this whether you're using the badger meter or this metron farm meter both meters work off of using um, cell phone networks so they both have that capability of use but the metron farmer metron farmer also makes the residential they make them both residential commercial so my best understanding out of it, after having talked with the customer service and, and, and uh, with the water service center, is that there has been some interchanging of the two meters, the two types, not in a lot of instances. I'd say probably in 5% of the circumstance, there's been an interchange. So I guess the, the, best, the best answer is that they have some Metron, uh, Farner, residential on hand, and they were installed as well, along with the Badger meters. 
but the primary use of this particular vendor is for commercial. That concerns me because my uh, the residents I got a call from two, three, four, five, or six, however many it was, they say, Councilman Mays, do I trust these people? Is they for real, or is they just somebody trying to get in the house? So now you're not saying that we don't have two different companies dealing and knocking residential doors. It's a letter been sent out and stuff. This company won't be involved with residential, or will they? Make it clear for me one last time. No, they will not. Vanguard is the Vanguard is the installer. That's that's what you're talking about. Vanguard is the installer. It was our responsibility to acquire the meters, but Vanguard is the installer. So is the resolution worded properly? Should it stay like it is? Yes. That's correct. Okay. There's nothing wrong with the res- resolution. This is the equipment. Okay. All we're talking about, we're not talking about the installer. We're only talking about purchasing the equipment. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is there any Ma- further discussion? Yes, Madam um, Chair, Madam President, Ms. Murphy Carter. I have, I have a question, and I, I, I don't know if this has been answered. Um, Clyde, when yes. will the residential water meters um, be complete? The, um, the, the, aren't we the removing Replacing all of the residential water meters? Correct. Because I think it's called. Go ahead, Clyde. No, I I know. I was I was just I was just uh, acknowledging that your statement was correct. I mean, you go ahead and tell ask me another question. Okay. So um, now there's not a charge to the um, resident, is, is it? No. Okay. Hmm. All right. This is part of the this is part of the water program. Uh, you know, all the meters all the meters needed to be changed. All the all, all the water meters, residential home meters had to be replaced. Okay. So do yep, you yep. have um so do you know when that will be complete? Uh, it's, uh, it, yeah, uh, the, the projection the projection was for the end of the year, but that was before COVID. So now I'm told okay. things are kind of I'm 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 told that things are kind of you know there there been some muted in terms of just like the uh, lead pipe replacement business. We're on four, we're on second and third notices um, to try to get people to you know to to let us you know change out those meters. And so, and and that number that number is as high as five thousand right now is what I'm understanding. So, um, it, it, we're about halfway through the program. Um, you know, based on all the water customers, we're about they've got about half the number installed of the total uh, population, if you will, of meters. But we're now, but we are up against some resistance. Okay, let me ask another question. What are we doing about residents? Did you know that um, some residents, particularly over over in um, University Park, some of the residents have small meters and some have large meters? I didn't know that. I didn't even know that that even, I mean, that would be something that, that was had, had been done. And so those who have large meters, they're getting charged um, an additional um, fee. I mean, they, their water bills are higher as opposed and, and to I, those and, who and have I, small meters. And if, if, I, if, I could, if I could help you out with that, I think they're referring to the line size because I think that's built into the master fee schedule, that line size, the size right. of the line that goes into the house, the size of the line that connects to the meter, is there's, that, that's in your master fee schedule. Okay, so my question is, when they get their meter um, 
replaced, will it be a small meter or a large meter or what size meter? Well, the meter that, yeah, I think that it, the, 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 the meter seems to be pretty standard. The meter that's being used, um, as far as I can tell, is a, is a pretty standard meter. I mean, there's, there's, there's no variation like that for the size of the meter. Like okay. I said, okay. that had to do with okay. the size of the line that was running the house. But the meter is a standard. They're using standard meters uh, that, 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 as I said, they connect to cell towers. Okay. Madam Chair? Mr. Briggs? Yeah. Uh, if Mr. I might wait, wait, you Mr. Briggs, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. I'm sorry. Unless you have a privileged motion, Ms. Winfrey Carter has the floor. Okay. okay. I just wanted to okay. answer her question. Okay. Oh, okay. You can go. go ahead, Mr. Briggs. Okay. Uh, usually, the 5 H line is uh, you know, regular house meter. But if somebody mm-hmm. has like an ir- irrigation system or a sprinkler system, they have a larger line size, like a, uh-huh. a three cu- three quarter inch or something like that, because they need, you know, more water for a sprinkler okay. system or an irrigation system. That's why. Okay. Thank you for clearing that up um, for me. You're welcome, uh, Ms. Woman. Great. Because I was having a hard time understanding that. <laughs> so if there's, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam call. President, Madam President, <laughs> real quick. <laughs> Through you to Mr. Edwards. Mr. Edwards, you say half of the um, meters have been changed, correct? That is my understanding, yes, sir. Okay, now I don't know how I want to do this formally or whatever, but Janelle, y'all can get it. But I want to request kind of like a a quick study. I want to know if the water bills went up, down, or stayed the same for those meters, the customers that have been changed. I want to know if the when we look at the meter changes, the new meters, do the water customers' bills go up, down, or stay the same? For the most part, that's what I want to see. Now, who would that request go to, Mr. Edwards? I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna take your request to Amanda. Okay. Uh, one of the things I know, one of the things I did learn about these particular meters is they're 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 uh, much more reliable, and they reveal a lot of information to the homeowner. The actual homeowner can understand where leakage is at in their own house. There's an application that you can use for it. So you. No, that's they, good. I'm sorry. That's that. I say that's good, but you see what my concern is. If we've had yeah. bad meters for years. And we got some of the highest water rates. Um, I'm gonna be curious to see with the new meters. I'm praying and hoping that people's bill don't go up. Um, if it stay the same, remember we got people say we got the highest bills in the country. If it go lower, hallelujah. But my, I want to kind of see what that. You know, I ain't putting a hard time frame, but rather than me get calls about it, I want to be proactive and kind of see what's happening with them customers' bills. And, you know, maybe we can do a sample of some of them, but I don't want a false sample. I kind of want to know how these new meters is affecting that. And then as a council, People don't know it, but the council, because of the master fee schedule, got the total ability to lower and raise water rates. Thank you. So if there's no further discussion, roll call on the approval, please. Mr. Winfrey? Mr. Winfrey has left the meeting. Okay. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. 
vote is five yes, zero no. The vote is five yes, zero no. Um, that brings us to liquor license. There are none, Madam President. Thank you. That brings us to the introduction and first reading of ordinances that would bring us to the emergency. Is that or no? Yes. Which we said point of order. What's your point of order, Councilman May? How many council people is present? Only five. We don't have enough to approve an emergency ordinance. We sure don't. So, um, so is Madam we President, Councilman May. I would move to postpone this until Monday's meeting. Postpone the emergency ordinance. There's a motion to postpone the emergency ordinance until Monday's meeting. Is there support for that? Madam Chair. Councilman Davis. I second. It's been moved and properly seconded. Is there any discussion? Wait a minute. Did we yeah, postpone that? Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. <laughs> Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Vote is five yes, zero no. Vote is five yes, zero no. To postpone that to the next council meeting. That brings us to second reading and enactment of ordinances. There are none. That brings us to additional discussion items. The first one being council leadership discussion. Yeah, Madam President. Excuse me, Mays. Yeah. I'm going to be looking close at this um, vote next month for president, vice president, who's going to be president and who's going to name finance chair. I count very good. And, Mr. Davis, I'm glad you're in the meeting because I can see Mayor Neely, Kate Fields, men, and y'all trying to decide the leadership. You, Kate Fields, Santino. I don't know if y'all are going to make Mr. Griggs president, Kate Fields, yourself, or whatever. But, Mr. Davis, I'm hoping that you don't vote to put us in a leadership position of people going constantly at people trying to get them. I've seen some of that tonight. You, I hope you don't let this community down. Now, when this thing start out, I'm going to have the first vote. Ms. Galloway been serving. I ain't tripping about no position. I've been on this council for seven years. I'm going to work with no position, and I work well. No titles, don't care about them. I wouldn't sell myself out and cut deals with these folks and let no mayor influence me. Now, if they want to name you president, so be it. Am I happy or sad with it? I ain't tripping. If you want to name Kate Fields president, I'm tripping. If you want to name Santino or Eva president, I'm tripping. I'd rather you name Griggs than to name Kate, Eva, or uh, Santino. Name yourself and see what they do. No title do I care about when it comes to the politics of this council. We'll um, miss... Galloway be president, it'll be better than Miss Field. So I'm going to be looking and listening close. You vote second, I vote first. I'm going to see what you do. I'll probably vote for myself. Don't care about it or not. I'll tell you what, it's a serious business. Uh, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say it cautiously and carefully. Your vision of who can help as you said in the news clip, black folks. I ain't impressed with Trump, and I don't think he's the best thing for me, and I ain't going to stay the course with him, and I will change horses in the middle of the stream. 
But this council president, just like Biden and Trump, I might have a different view. I sure hope I don't have to go through a presidency um, under this great city of Flint. At this present time, maybe another time if I see them change their ways. But I don't think Ms. Fields should be president at this time. That's part of my discussion. Is there anyone else that has any discussion? Hearing none, Councilman Mays, then, then we're done. Um, that takes us to the emergency more emergency um, executive orders of the Supreme Court that you wanted to discuss? Yeah, this should be just as quick as and frank as that one. We put motions on the floor, and some of us has voted because we couldn't get the mayor to come up in an emergency. The Supreme Court, in my opinion, have emphasize what I was trying to say to this legislative body, whether all are here to hear it or some are here to hear it. It's recorded. It's a record. Our ordinance on the state of emergency, in my opinion, is more specific on what the executive officer should or shall do in an emergency. If he's making rules and regulations, partially opening city hall, curfews, or whatever, he must convene expediently with the legislative body. Emergency, this one went on for months, and it's like a dictatorship. It's like somebody punking the legislative body out and now the Supreme Court then spoke, and you see how we had to postpone the meeting, and one person in a whole state ain't got that type of authority. And emergencies are something quick, and then you go back to good government. You deal with executive and legislative, and you don't let the executive body divide and conquer you for their own well-being. They don't care sometimes about you. They care about what they're doing. And our job is to be a check and balance and set budgets and rules and see how government operates. So I'm saying to the council members, and I wish Mr. Winfrey was here and that he can listen to the recording, why is a charter give you the power to have people, whether it's building inspectors, blight officers, mayors, to come to you? And they can't come to you in your meeting telling you what they're going to do. We didn't call them for that. I called Mr. Neely up here to say, hey, look, do you understand what the law is telling you we should do? I say God is good because the Supreme Court emphasized my argument on a state level with a legislative branch and an executive branch type person. And you see how quick they moved, and we back in the electronic meetings. Well, the same thing should happen locally. And this council, I'm going to ask that Mr. Neely be at the Monday meeting, not to give us an update. Janelle, you can send the communications cry. If you hear it, you can make it known. But I'm formally asking them to come up, and I'm going to ask that this council discussion stay on the agenda, and if he come up, well, I'll request it be moved to a special order. But don't come up to give me an update. Come up to about what I want to talk about, your presence in an emergency expediently when I read some rule, order, or change on the news. He's not the legislative branch. He's not the rule maker. He, under the ordinance. We can amend, modify, change, extend, repeal, and until somebody say we out of the emergency locally. I heard Mr. Woodson talk about the county and sending it over and all of that. We need to talk about this. We need to hold the administration accountable. And this is just one aspect of accountability as I wrap this up. 
we need to hold them accountable in appointments, the emergency ordinance, the way government operates, and that's our job. Appointees do what appointees do. Council people do what council people do. And for those council people who refuse to do their job in a timely manner, for those council people who don't understand their job and therefore they just don't know what they we should be doing, read the charter. Our greatest power is to hold folks accountable to the charter, including ourselves, and um, to make sure we do what's best for the residents of the city of Flint in all cases, particularly in emergency. I request that the staff on my behalf send the communications out once again, and you can put in there if need be, or you can tell them, Clyde, don't come to give me an update. I'm a councilman. I know pretty much what's happening in the city. Come to talk about government operations in an emergency. Thank you. Thank you. If there's no further discussion, that brings us to um, final council comments. Mr. Mays, we can start with you. Yeah, I'm going to say this. Um, in seven years, I've stayed close to home. In the last three weeks or so, I've asked constituents calls. I have did communications with certain departments in, from Stockton, California. I've had people on Facebook wish me well, tell me it was a deserved break, but I'm working. I'm supplementing my income, and I will file my taxes. And so I can appreciate the invitation to Stockton, California, right outside Sacramento. But also I've been getting communications back and forth. I got communications and news clips about the proposed 9 o'clock closing of stores, I think, prematurely, and I think politically, you got the people who was advocating that the most voted no for police, protect and serve, break up lottery. They voted no for blight, clean up, not just at the stores, but in these streets and these abandoned houses. And I'm like, how can they have the audacity to vote no? and then squander $24 million of savings listening to Eric Scorsoni and Mr. Neely then, and then try to get creative on the backs of taxpayers, small businesses. There's been no study of their, ta of their margin of profit. Will they close? Will they be boarded up? Will they leave the city? I think it's a irresponsible articulation. I think the media should tell both the pros and the cons as the elected officials articulate their thoughts. I think the media should learn about the previous proposals in order to break that up, lottering signs, cameras, more police, and who voted yes and who voted no. And now I think it's kind of like a grasp of straws and that ain't going to solve crime in the city of Flint. My position is this. We can look at some things, but let's not be hasty and let's not ride a false wave of hope as it relates to these proposals that hasn't been well thought out yet. Maybe we'll get to do that in this process. So I'll say this. As the election draws close, who sits in the seat in the president's See, the House and the Senate has a lot to do with funding coming to states and cities. Um, people can say what they want. I'll talk about God whenever I want because that's where my faith is at. I'll be honest and truthful, and I'm telling you, when I seen that, Mr. Davis, what you were saying about Mr. Trump, I couldn't believe it. I don't agree with it. And um, it's not true. He's not the best for black folks, in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Is Mr. Davis still on the line? I'm, I'm sorry, I was muted. Yes, I'm yes, here. Thank you for indulging, Madam Chair. 
Uh, yes, I, I, I'm, I'm, I haven't voted yet, but I'm contemplating, contemplating voting for President Trump. Why? Because I'm tired of them Democrats. They don't have to work for nobody's black votes. Up to 91% of us vote automatically Democrat. Bump that. People losing everything. Foreclosures. The house need rehab. We living in deplorable condition, third world condition. I'm talking about the poor folks, not middle class. Now, they're too comfortable, the Democrats. I've been one all my life. And people want to politic it as recall and on and on. I'm a sellout and I'm everything. Boot liquors and all. I'm a million miles from that. I was born on Bundy Street. I was born on Northside. Went to Martin and Northwestern homes and everything else. I'm more Flintstone than anything that I know and forever will be. But I want to put that puppy to sleep. My attendance is flawless. I do not play with nothing I do. I believe in winning. We get different treatment as poor people. Gretchen, with my guy in, hell, we don't hear a word about water no more. We still in conditions like it was when Obama was in. I hope Trump, and I make my words sweet because you never know when God going to bless us with somebody. Trump and them got the money. We need, this is divided states of America. We got to unite. I'm not going to be one of them black folks back in the 60s and 70s with these marches and act like this is all racism. Black folks is more racist. Why? Because it's no longer a vote. It's a dictatorship. We got to break that. Negroes better start making these folks earn your vote. You better make them earn your vote. Quit letting these uh, so-called activists intimidate you. People elected me to put us in a better place. I'm working my behind off to get, the, if nothing else, second ward in a better place. Now, I got to meet with President Trump. Just like Mayor Weaver, when he, she said he was not welcome, he came to Flint. They said he didn't. He went to Bethel on the north side. Ben Carson, during the development, whether Obama, whoever, started it, he did send $30 million. I was in the press conference in the main lobby of City Hall. Enough is enough. Democrats is all right with me either way. But I'm tired of Biden and anybody else coming here and automatically think we supposed to vote as a black person. Hell No earn our vote. And that's why I met with President Trump. So let's get clear. I'm not a sellout. Let's be very clear. I'm not a sellout. And I thank you. And when it comes to liquor stores, it's time for them to clean the act up. Thank you for indulging. Thank you, sir. That brings us to Ms. Winfrey Carter. <laughs> I guess I'm confused. I'm trying to figure out how did uh, President Trump earn the black vote? Anyway, um, thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to um, check the status of a couple of um, referrals. And, Janelle, I would like to check the status of the decorative lights outlining um, Chevrolet, um, I guess, um, what, where else, Miller Road, the decorative lights that um, different uh, constituents have called in talking about. I would like to check the status on that. And then also I thought about something. I would like to check the status, and maybe I'll save this one until I can get, a, um, get the address. But, um, and also I would like to make sure that um, the neighborhood safety officers will be at the meeting on Monday to discuss the ordinances that deal with blight, those ordinances that they are responsible for as far as um, the city of Flint and, and, and the blight department, okay? Yes, ma'am, I'll make that request. All righty. Thank you, ma'am. You all set, Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. That brings us to Mr. Grigg. Yeah, okay. Uh, I would like to uh, make it clear to Councilman Mays that uh, I adopted a three-mile stretch of Interstate 69 in my ward before I became a city councilman. That goes from I-75 to uh, 
east of Hammerbury. So, uh, well, no, east of Grand Traverse. It's a three-mile stretch. And believe it or not, you know, I actually worked uh, 40 hours a week for 25 years without any gap in employment. So I did have a productive life. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. I just want to say um, to my colleagues, Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for making the sacrifice to um, complete the work of the the community on today. And um, that's all I want to say. Please, please, please be safe, people. Um, I noticed the other day um, 5,000 cases in Michigan in one day. So just protect your family um, and be safe and know that um, you can vote. During, I think the hours now are, is it, Janelle, is it 9 to 5? 8 to 5, Monday folks? through Friday, 9 to 5, Saturday and Sunday. 8 to 5, you said? Yes, Monday through Thank Friday. You. Okay, Monday through Friday. And so please, please, please um, exercise whatever choices that you want to make. And so with that, I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn. Madam President. Councilman May. I think we got five people. I ain't going to hold it up, but I tell you what, I pray to God for the people of the city of Flint, me and my family, and um, the people across the nation. And so I so move to adjourn. There's a motion to adjourn. Is there support for that motion? Madam Chair. Councilwoman Winford Carter. I'll support that motion. It's been moved and properly supported. Is there no um, roll call on the adjournment, please? Mr. Griggs? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Five yes, zero no to adjourn. Vote is five yes, zero no to adjourn. Have a great night. We are adjourned. Goodbye.